Good afternoon. I'm Storm Team 12 Chief Meteorologist Ken South. The reason we are breaking in right now is because, as anticipated, we do have a squall line of thunderstorms moving in from the west this afternoon. We have seen several severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings with this line as it's been moving through north Louisiana. Now it's approaching the Mississippi River, and we've got our first tornado warning for parts of our area. Now the line is still in northeastern Louisiana, but there has been a tornado within this line. At one point, it was confirmed on the ground, but for right now, this is a radar indicated rotation within this line, but it is quickly approaching the Mississippi River, and the warning goes for the next hour until 315, and it does include parts of Issaquina and Sharkey counties in the southern delta. And that is part of our area. That's why we're breaking in. We will likely be with you through much of the afternoon as this entire line is severe, and we do have uh, warnings along the line even farther to the south, and all that's going to be moving through as we go through through this afternoon. Here's a look at uh, the storm that is producing the severe weather right there. It's this portion of the line and notice that we've got a couple of tornado warnings here. This is the one that's going to be expiring soon where we have the squall line itself, but this is the new tornado warning issued for northeastern Louisiana. I believe this would be East Carroll Parish and also for parts of Issaquina and Sharkey counties until 315. That's about the next uh, 58 minutes or so. So we have already tracked this out. We've already put in uh, 65 miles per hour as the forward motion of this storm. It is moving to the northeast at that uh, fast speed. And that's why this warning is a little bit larger than the tornado warnings that uh, you usually see here because it is moving so quickly. So if we track this out with our cone here, you can see that these are the places that are going to be in the path of the storm over the next hour or so. We're looking at going at 219. Lake Providence, that's still in Louisiana at 238. But then after that, Myersville, of course, that is in Issaquina County. That is the most populated area in Issaquina County. It's going to be tracking very close to there. So if you live in and around Myersville and Issaquina County, you need to take shelter right now. Also, a little bit farther downstream, Rolling Fork and Anguilla, both in Sharkey County and Notice, both of those close to the top of the hour. So we do have some lead time with this storm. If you live in Rolling Fork, Work or in Anguilla, you've got 30 minutes or more to take shelter from the storm before it actually reaches your area. So we want you to uh, do that now or very soon. Hopefully, you've already thought about where your safe spot is so you can get to that location. Your best opportunity for safety here is going to be to get underground into a storm shelter or a basement. Uh, if you don't have that, you need to get to the lowest floor, sturdy structure, small interior room, staying away from windows. All right, let's take a look at Live Eye Max 2 full screen, and we're going to get a closer look at this storm uh, so we can see where the rotation with it might be. So. Uh, we're going to put on our velocity product. This is our reflectivity. This shows us the rain, and you don't see any kind of discrete cells at ahead of the line, so we know this rotation is embedded uh, within this line. As we take a look at our uh, velocity product, which is the wind motion and the wind speed at cloud level within the storm, uh, what we do notice here is that there is a rotation right there between. Bastrop and Oak Grove in northeastern Louisiana. That's where we have the red pixels right here, which indicates wind moving away from the radar site. In this case, we're talking about the radar site in uh, Rankin County near Brandon. The green is wind moving in the opposite direction toward the radar site. Those are close together. They're turning in on each other, and that's where we have this radar indicated rotation. So if we know where the rotation is, once again, we can zoom on into it and then track it farther to the northeast. So I'll push it down to the bottom left portion of the screen here, and once again, we'll draw a cone that just takes it into across the river and into uh, Mississippi and into Issaquina County. So you can see some of the maybe smaller communities that are going to be uh, in the path of this storm over the next several minutes, not just for the next hour. So a lot of these are still going to be in Louisiana from Lake Providence through Greenville and Forest. But once we get to about 252, that's 30 32 minutes from right now, uh, it should be again near Myersville in Issaquina County and then probably close to Cary at the top of the hour. Let's see how close it is uh, to the Mississippi River. We've already put in 65 miles per hour 
into Live IMAX 12 here. So the distance away from the river is about 28 miles, but moving at better than a mile per minute, it's actually going to reach the Mississippi River in about 20 to 25 minutes. So if you are in Mississippi in the southern delta there, you've got about 25 minutes before uh, the rotating part of this squall line of severe weather uh, begins to move in your direction. All right, let's uh, clear this out just a bit, and I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit more closely here. Again, there's where we have the rotation. You see bear skin right there moving towards Pioneer and Forest. I know a lot of these places may not be too familiar with you because they are in Louisiana, but very close to getting into Mississippi. And of course, as we zoom into Mississippi, we'll see some of these streets uh, begin to pop in here. Uh, we would expect Highway 1, which moves right along the Mississippi River. That's going to be the first major roadway in the path of this storm. Uh, we've got 465, which is south of New Fittler. And then as we get into Issaquina County, we're looking at Highway 61 there, uh, which runs through onward. We don't want you to be in a vehicle when a storm like this is moving through, but if you've got enough time, and in the Southern Delta, we think you've got about a good, let's say, 20 to maybe 30 minutes. If you do have enough time, you do need to get to that uh, sturdy structure, uh, getting out of a mobile home and finding that sturdy structure, which is as close to you as possible. So, uh, again, we're looking at this one tornado warning here, but I want to take a look at all of the watches and the warnings that we've got going on right now. And they continue to be issued with the squall line uh, all along the line. We've got a severe thunderstorm which butts up right there against the Mississippi River, uh, just across the river from Warren, Claiborne, Jefferson, and Adams County. And remember, this is a severe thunderstorm which is in a tornado watch area. So if there's any kind of rotation that starts to develop or intensify within this line, within the severe thunderstorm, um, it is likely going to be upgraded to a tornado. Tornado warning, which is exactly what's happened here a little bit farther to the south uh, between Alexandria and Woodville in Mississippi, right around Marksville. There's yet another uh, tornado warning right there. Let's uh, take a look at reflectivity um, just to show you within this line right there. Um, yeah, it doesn't look as uh, solid as a farther north, but we still are getting rotation uh, a little bit farther to the south in parts of Louisiana. So everybody, I think, in Mississippi from central through south Mississippi is going to be under the gun as the squall line uh, rapidly moves through the state over the next couple of hours. Now, we've got complete uh, coverage of this severe weather event. We've got meteorologist Jacob Lanier here in studio. Uh, we've got meteorologist Scotland Williams in the field, and our storm chase vehicle will have live reports from her coming up in just a few minutes, but for right now, I want to send it over to Jacob. Okay, thanks, Ken. So I wanted to get a quick overview here of all of central Mississippi, our winds right now. We're under a high wind warning until 7 o'clock tonight. We've already seen gusts this afternoon up to 50 miles per hour. Right now, Vicksburg, Jackson International at 44 mile per hour winds. So very strong southerly winds ahead of our severe weather. So again, the entire state of Mississippi in a level 4 moderate severe weather risk. This is right within the window we were expecting for storms to arrive along the Mississippi River. The window opened at one and it's just after two o'clock now and that's where we're seeing these first uh, storms arrive. So again, a tornado watch stretches from South Mississippi, Natchez, Macomb, up towards Vicksburg, the entire Jackson Metro, into the Delta and back towards the Golden Triangle. This tornado watch goes until 8 p.m. this evening. So we still have several more hours as this line moves through of damaging winds and the potential for tornadoes. So right now again here at Live MX 12, there's that nasty line of storms and essentially from down near Baton Rouge and Alexandria, there is a warning along this entire line up into the Mississippi Delta and in towards Arkansas. So a long line of severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings, and I want to take you into that tornado warning, which is why we're on the air here, and it is right now for this rotation uh, that is going to be between Delhi, Louisiana, and Pioneer. So there's I-20, so here's Vicksburg down there, there's Warren County, but this is tracking to the north and east at about 65 miles per hour or so, so storms going very fast. Fast, and I just put a forecast track on this showing when this circulation would likely arrive in the Mississippi Delta. And it's showing that this would likely cross the Mississippi River, say, as we head towards uh, the 3 o'clock hour. So that would be near Myersville here at 3 o'clock, Rolling Fork towards 312, Holly Bluff at 319. So Issaquina County would be the first spot to possibly see this tornado. We've again had it confirmed a couple of times that these 
uh, tornadoes in this line of damaging winds, they're going to be spin ups. Uh, they have the potential to be longer track, but they can also spin up for a couple minutes and then recycle, and we could have a tornado somewhere else in the line as well. So that's possibly what we're seeing here as we look at Live IMAX 12 radar. Just a solid line of damaging winds, 60 to 70 miles per hour. And then in this line, we have the potential for rotation in a few spots. So again, there's the Mississippi River, and this storm is going to arrive along the Mississippi River into. Issaquina, northern Warren County here, likely in the next 30 minutes or so. I also want to mention that just a few parts here of Warren County have been added to a severe thunderstorm warning uh, right there just along the river. So it's not really including downtown Vicksburg or Yachtney or South, South Warren yet. But this severe thunderstorm warning also has a tornado possible with it and winds up to 65 miles per hour. So the tornado warning is just north of Warren County. It includes places like Cary, Rolling Fork, Myersville, New Fittler, Smeads, and all the way up towards Anguilla there along Highway 61. So again, if you live in Issaquina County or here in southern Sharkey County, you need to seek shelter now. We're trying to give you as much advance notice as possible because these storms today are moving very fast, 60 to 70 miles per hour. So the more heads up we can give you, the better you're likely uh, to hopefully avoid any damage or injuries as you seek shelter. And again, shelter from a tornado is going to be the lowest floor of your home, interior room away from outdoor windows and exterior doors. And hopefully you can have pillows or a helmet or something to help cover your head as well as you seek shelter. So again, that's the tornado warning that we're watching there. It includes Issaquina and Sharkey County until 315. The storm is still back in Louisiana, but it's about 20 minutes away from the Mississippi River. So as we go over here to velocity again, our wind mode just looking for any circulation. Uh, kind of this spot near Epps. North of Delhi points out to me, and then also up towards the Oak Grove area. So the National Weather Service saying that there could potentially be one or two rotations in here. We had an earlier a confirmed tornado back off towards the west near Rayville. There was a confirmed storm back there, and that is what is tracked up now towards Pioneer and Oak Grove. If that track continues, it would likely be uh, northern Issaquina County. This circulation could go into central or southern Issaquina County and eventually track towards Cary. So there's two storms we're watching there. Let's see, I think, yeah, there, so there's that storm back near Rayville. That's the confirmed tornado. I can just click on this and show you the information from that. It says a tornado at US 80 and Gin Road relayed from train spotters and law enforcement there in Rayville. That's in Louisiana. That was about 30 minutes ago. And so that is the line of storms that are watching approach the Mississippi River. So again, a tornado warning there in the Delta, severe thunderstorm warnings all along the Mississippi River. And in the next half hour or so, those are likely going to be extended into Adams, Jefferson, Claiborne, and Warren counties. And eventually down the road, these storms will arrive in the Jackson Metro, say by 4 p.m., right around the evening commute. So that could pose, pose some problems. I also can show you here future radar really quick and show you the arrival of these storms. So here we are almost 3 o'clock, right on schedule here. These storms about to cross the Mississippi River, heading towards 4. This line of damaging winds and embedded tornadoes would be near Yazoo City, the Jackson Metro. 5 o'clock, still in the Jackson Metro and I-55 corridor, closer to 6, 7, dinner time for Hattiesburg and Laurel as that line of damaging winds and tornadoes holds together. So we're going to continue to keep an eye on this, and for now, we'll send it back over to Chief Meteorologist Kim South. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Jacob. Uh, we are trying to uh, get in contact right now with meteorologist Scotland Williams. She is out in the field in one of our storm chase vehicles. As soon as we are able to, uh, we're going to go to a report from her. Uh, notice the line, though, is not yet in Mississippi. She uh, was going to be stationed in the Vicksburg area as the line is approaching. Um, it looks like the tornado warning that we have in effect right now is actually going to be just probably north of her location. Let's take a look at. Uh, uh, the tornado warnings right there. There you can see one in southeastern Arkansas, northeastern Louisiana, and then the latest one, which extends pretty far off to the east. And that's because, once again, it is moving so quickly. Uh, the forward motion of this has not changed uh, to the northeast at about 65 miles per hour. This is a radar indicated rotation. And Jacob just showed you that there are at least a couple of points within this severe line uh, that may be rotating that could put down a tornado at a moment's notice. And that's quickly going to be approaching. Uh, the Mississippi River. Let's take a look at, uh, let's see, this is the uh, reflectivity once again. There you see the squall line. We'll check out the lightning with this. Lots of lightning strikes just within this squall line. We're not looking at a lot of hail with this so far, but so it's just a lot of rain 
We're going to see a tremendous amount of wind and some dangerous lightning strikes uh, when this moves into Mississippi here in the next, I would say, 20 to 30 minutes. Now, what was that again from the producer? Okay, so Scotland is, uh, she's ready to go with a live report. Uh, Scotland, let us know where you are right now in relation to the squall line. Yeah, we are looking now at the Mississippi River. We are on Latorno Road here in southern Warren County. So uh, there's a severe thunderstorm warning for the chip. western part of the county. But here we are. We're not seeing any rain right now, but we are under that tornado watch until 8 o'clock. And we are, of course, the entire state in that level 4 out of 5 moderate risk. And uh, just for some facts, this is one of the largest moderate zones ever issued by the storm prediction center because it extends north into Tennessee. Um, it extends to the west for Louisiana and Arkansas and even off to the east, including Alabama. So within this level four risk that includes where I am right now here in Warren County, we expect significant 70 plus mile an hour winds. And you can see the trees blowing off in the distance there. And we've had some strong, strong wind gusts that we've seen that even kind of rocked the vehicle. And this is a heavy vehicle that we're in right now. Um, and the wind they were expecting that's almost hurricane force but what we've seen so far is tropical storm force winds of so 40 50 plus mile an hour winds so again that tornado watch is in effect until eight o'clock for pike and walthall counties down to the south it'll be in effect until nine o'clock with um, embedded tornadoes within the line which has not yet reached where we are right now also speaking of the winds that high wind warnings in effect for central mississippi and these are just for the environmental winds that we've already seen meaning outside of the thunderstorms we could see those gusts up to 60 miles an hour. So four severe thunderstorm warnings, that's for Western Warren County right now. We want to treat these like tornado warnings just because of the strong winds. We could see tornado-like damage with outside of these storms that are beginning to approach the Mississippi River. So you want to download that Storm Team 12 weather app. You need multiple ways to receive warnings because there is one in effect right now off to the north of us for Issaquina and Sharkey County. So if you want to tell your friends who maybe not don't normally watch the news or who aren't tuning in, they can do so right from their phone. They can download the WJTV news app all of this free in the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. You want to tell those friends who maybe aren't home right now, before they get out on the road, you want to tell them to tune in, check frequently to the forecast because these storms are moving quickly and that could give us little lead time. Of course, Storm Team 12, we're doing what we can to inform you of what's happening and I'll be out here tracking conditions um, until the threat is over. So I'll send it back to you all in the studio. All right, thank you, Scotland. Very good information in that report. Uh, she's going to be out there as the squall line is moving in. And that's a very good point that she made is uh, that we've got uh, very strong winds ahead of this line of storms, not even associated with the squall line itself. And there is a wind advisory in effect for Mississippi because of those tropical storm force and possibly even up to hurricane force wind gusts that could happen uh, throughout the afternoon. So it's going to be one of those days where you have to keep both hands on the steering wheel if you're going to be driving, not just in the bad weather, the squall line here, but also out ahead of it. And if you've been out and about today, you know how windy it is out there. So we are just still tracking this one tornado warning within this line now moving from northeast Louisiana back into Mississippi. We've uh, got it moving at uh, about 65 miles per hour off to the north and to the east. It's soon going to be in parts of Issaquina and Sharkey counties. And these are the places that are now going to be in the path of the storm. Transylvania and Lake Providence, that's still in Louisiana, but that's just over the next few minutes. If it's moving at 65 miles per hour, it's moving at better than a mile per minute. So it's not going to take long to cross the river. We think that's going to happen just a few minutes before 3 o'clock, and then it'll be in Issaquina County for just a few minutes. Issaquina County is not that wide, only a few miles wide. And then after that, it's going to be in Sharkey County, Rolling Fork right around the top of the hour, and Gwilla a few minutes after that, and Bailey at about 11 minutes after 3 o'clock. The warning goes until 3.15. Right now, it is still a radar-indicated rotation, but the reason a tornado warning is issued is because it could put down a tornado. Uh, 
very quickly, and we want you to be prepared before that happens and before this line actually moves through your area and potentially uh, produces damage. Let's go ahead and take a look at Live Eye Max 2 full screen uh, so we can try to find out where the rotation is uh, within this line. So we'll clear this off just a little bit here, and we're going to zoom in to where we have the tornado warning. And I'm going to use uh, our scope tool here. Uh, so we're going to keep it on the reflectivity, which is the radar, so you can see the rain and the lightning strikes. But within the circle here, we're kind of x-raying the storm. We're looking inside the storm to check out the wind speed and the wind motion, uh, at least at cloud level. And as we scan the storm, again, right there, we see a rotation that's popping up right there, I would say, just to the east of the EPS area. That's the most pronounced rotation that I can see. And when uh, I say that, we're talking about um, winds that are moving, of course, in opposite directions. The red is when moving away from the radar site. In this case, we're looking at the radar site coming in from Brandon, moving in this direction, and then the green moving in that direction. So let's just uh, take a look at the velocity, and we'll examine this once again and see if we can query Uh, some of these wind speeds. So right there, you've got a, a negative 36. The negative just means that those are inbound winds. And on the opposite side, you've got winds moving in the other direction. Again, that is east of EPS. Let's go ahead and scan up the line here. And uh, there's a little bit of interference right there. Um, so we can't see too well just to the uh, west of Forest and Oak Grove, but the leading edge of this line is beginning to shift to the east of there. So there may be a little rotation a little bit farther uh, to the north here, uh, pretty close to Forest and Oak Grove as well. So we're looking at a couple of suspicious areas uh, within the squall line that may be rotating, even if this doesn't. Put down a tornado. This is, at a minimum, still a severe thunderstorm. Take a look at uh, once again the uh, reflectivity with this, and you'll notice just how nasty uh, this line of storms is. That can produce damage all on its own. Even if it doesn't put down a tornado, we're still looking at wind gusts coming from this line of storms on the order of 60, 70 miles per hour, or possibly even better, which can also. Uh, push down trees and cause structural damage. So we want you to be careful as this is beginning to cross the river and move into Mississippi. We will zoom in to Myersville and Issaquina County. Those, these are the places that we've been talking about here over the past several minutes. There you can see the leading edge right there in East Carroll Parish in Louisiana, right along the Mississippi River. So it's going to be crossing here just in the next few minutes. And the heaviest rain and the strongest, gustiest winds uh, beginning to reach Highway 1 and places like Magna Vista and New Fittler. And also, uh, once we get into Sharkey County, places like Highway 61, uh, Rolling Fork back down to Cary and Anguilla. Let's uh, zoom out just a little bit because we are getting some rain here at the station. We are now beginning to <clears throat> get discrete cells that are popping up ahead of the line. Now, we talk about that a lot because these discrete cells, they can blow up and they can start rotating as well. Now, these are just in the developmental stages, but they could get stronger. They could start to rotate themselves. So we're going to be watching the line, obviously, but we're also going to be watching these discrete cells because as they grow and they move quickly to the northeast, they're going to be moving through a moisture-rich environment and in an environment with a whole lot of shear in the atmosphere. Shear is defined as a change in wind speed and direction with height in the atmosphere. And we all know how windy it's been at the surface. Those winds coming in from the south today. Well, you go up in the atmosphere and those winds begin to veer around to the southwest and the west, and they're even stronger there. So that's could, that is what could make um, the threat of a tornado. If that rotating column of air uh, at the surface is sucked up by a strengthening thunderstorm, again, that can put down a tornado. So I uh, just want to keep folks in mind that this area this afternoon, even though we're not seeing a lot of rain here just yet, we're going to be under the gun for those discrete cells developing through the afternoon as long as well as uh, the squall line moving in from uh, the west. And within the squall line, we're going to be looking for those embedded rotations. Now, 
obviously, if uh, you could maybe, maybe see something developing in one of these discrete cells out ahead of the line, but any kind of rotation, any kind of tornado being produced within this line is going to be embedded uh, within the rain. It's going to be hard to see anyway because of the landscape of Mississippi with the hills and the trees, so we don't want you to go out and look for any kind of tornado. If a tornado warning is issued for your area, just Take precautions and do it immediately. Don't go to a window. Don't go outside to look for it. Just stay away from windows. Get to that basement. Get to the storm shelter. A small room in the interior of her home and go ahead and take shelter until we tell you you're in the all clear or the tornado warning has been canceled or expires for your area. And speaking of the tornado warning, we still do have that one right there. You see that large tornado warning uh, because that squall line is moving in from Louisiana for parts of Issaquina and Sharkey counties until 315. Farther down the line, another tornado warning in uh, central Louisiana. I believe this is moving towards Catahoula and Concordia parishes, and that could soon be approaching Wilkinson County in the southern part of Adams County as well. So we're going to keep watching that one and also, of course, this entire severe line, uh, which is lined up just to the west of the Mississippi River. Now, for more on what's happening in northeastern Louisiana, I'm going to send it over to meteorologist Jacob Lanier. We're also mentioning, you know, those kind of showers and cells forming around the Jackson Metro. I just wanted to show our view from downtown Jackson. So we're looking west. That's West Jackson. That is one of those cells that Ken was showing you on Live IMAX 12. That is what we call the rain shaft. Now we know there's not a tornado in this. It's not tall enough. There's not rotation in this storm yet. But that could happen down the line. Right now we can just see the camera shaking. Winds gusting in the downtown area around 50 miles per hour. There's been several trees down. Downtown, I know one of our crews is heading there as well. But that's the rain shaft over West Jackson moving northeast at about 50 to 60 miles per hour. So that's kind of the heavy rain that's moving through parts of the Jackson Metro. Nothing severe though in the downtown area, but the camera is certainly shaking. And also, I want to point out notice those clouds. Um, they're not quite as low as we saw last week. Last week when we had 25 tornadoes in the state, we had cloud tops a little bit lower, so it's a little easier for a funnel or a tornado to reach the ground. So that's one good thing we have going for us today is cloud bases is what we call them are a little bit further higher from the ground so that creates a, a little bit harder job for the atmosphere to put down a tornado. So that's something that we're going to monitor as well. But that rain shaft now moving north there and I can show you that here on Live MX 12 as well. So that's what we were looking at here from downtown Jackson. We were looking west. That's the rain shaft moving up towards Presidential Hills about to cross Highway 49 and that'll probably track up 220 towards Lake Heiko, West Ridgeland area as well. And again, uh, just looking here, it's just not, uh, these are just so uh, small that there's no rotation in these yet. So that's good news for us. So that's what's happening in the metro. Let's get back to that tornado warning, though. This again continues for Issaquina and Sharkey counties for about 30 more minutes until 315. So again, as we turn on our warnings here, that's this shade in red here. So it includes areas from Smeads, Magna Vista there, up 465 and Highway 1 there, all the way up to Myersville, Rolling Fork, Cary, Blanton also included along Highway 61. So again, you should be in your safe place now here in Issaquina and Sharkey counties. Uh, we've had this tornado warning for about 30 minutes now, so you've had plenty of heads up. And on Live IMAX 12 radar, that line of damaging winds and maybe an embedded tornado is about to reach the Mississippi River. So I want to switch over to our wind mode, our velocity mode. And, you know, we have pretty tight rotation here um, right near Transylvania. So that's just across the river from New Fiddler. So this is moot tracking northeast at 65 miles per hour. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a tornado cross the Mississippi River in the next 10 minutes or so. There's rotation there south of Greenfield, Louisiana. And again, just looking at both of our uh, velocity products, it looks like those reds and greens are pretty close together. And if there's a tornado, that's probably where it's going to be. So I want to zoom in and query these winds, find out how strong our rotation is. So right now, it looks like these greens, they're going towards the radar there at 35 miles per hour. These reds are heading away from the radar at about 20 miles per hour. So doing the math, that gives us about a 55 mile per hour rotation there, which is just across the Mississippi River. So if there's a tornado, 
That's where it's going to be, right here near Transylvania and Louisiana. So I'm going to circle that for us and then give a storm track on it because, again, folks, this could cross the Mississippi River pretty shortly, moving up towards Issaquina County. So, again, this storm is moving towards the north and east at about 55 miles per hour. So we're just going to put a forecast track on this. Moving to the northeast, I want to make sure that I'm getting uh, the trajectory. Yep, trajectory is on there properly. So um, here's some ETAs. Hollybrook, uh, they're at 250 um, and up towards Myersville, say around 305. So 15, 20 minutes for this possible tornado near Transylvania about to cross. And that's Tallulah, Mississippi on Highway 1 at 255, rolling fork closer to 315, which makes sense. That's down the line. So again, it looks like we just had an update here on Live MX 12. Still some pretty good rotation there near Transylvania. So I just want to keep that highlighted here. Again, this is miles, maybe three, four miles to the west of the Mississippi River. So again, there's 465, there's Highway 1, Highway 61. So this is Warren County down here, not in the tornado warning. But that's where the circulation is. It's tracking to the north and will likely cross Highway 1 in Issaquina County in the next 10 minutes or so. So again, you need to be in your shelter. If you're in Issaquina County right now, we could have a tornado touchdown at any time. I do want to check, make sure that we don't have any debris from this. I don't see any debris on this right now. Um, let's check from our Jackson radar. Nothing uh, that is definite, so that's good news. So again, usually we would see kind of a blue or white shading that would signify some debris. We certainly still see those reds and greens close together right there near Transylvania, and that's what we would watch for a spin up. Uh, when we look at Live IMAX 12 radar, again, these are uh, this line, a squall line that we call it, it's just hard to find on reflectivity mode, this regular radar, where circulations would be. I can pick out a little bit of a notch right there. That would be the notch between Greenfield and Transylvania. Again, about a mile or two away from the Mississippi River. So that's the warning for us. And again, that's really the only rotation right now that is threatening here in Mississippi. So it would be just south of Lake Providence if there's a tornado, about five miles away there from Highway 1. So it looks like the rotation, you know, still holding on there. We can query this again, see if it is strengthened or weakened a little bit. 38 miles per hour, that's almost 40. Uh, 18 miles per hour, almost 20. So that's about 50 mile per hour rotation. So five mile per hour uh, weaker than it was just a moment ago, but certainly something to watch. It approaches the Mississippi River. And Ken, you're also watching this storm closely as it arrives in Issaquina County. Yeah, it is uh, getting very close. The update that we got from the National Weather Service, we saw the um, the polygon, the tornado polygon, change a little bit. So we know there was an update to the storm. The only significant change was that the forward motion of the storm was down a little bit from 65 to about 60 miles per hour. So we've already plugged that into uh, Live I Max 12. Jacob showed you where that rotation is between Transylvania and Holly Brook. So it is now about seven seven, eight miles away from crossing the Mississippi River and getting into the state of Mississippi. And it's moving at exactly a mile a minute. So if it's seven, eight miles away, that means it's only seven, eight minutes away. And then once it gets into Mississippi, well, it's pretty much right on top of uh, Highway 1 and the New Fittler area. And then very soon crossing the uh, county line from Issaquina into Sharkey counties. That's going to happen in about 13 minutes or so. And then crossing Highway 61 just a minute or two later. So we've been on the air now for, I would say, a good 20 minutes or more, warning folks in this area to take shelter. Well, time is now running shorter. You don't have uh, the great amount of time that we had earlier. Now you're looking at 10 to 15 minutes, if you live in this area, to get into your safe spot because the storm is quickly approaching, moving at 60 miles per hour at about a mile a minute. Now, just to the south of this area, of course, we got that squall line that is also moving into Warren County, where we have a severe thunderstorm warning right across the river. And for more about uh, what's happening in Warren County, we're going to send it over to Byron Brown. Byron. We mentioned the, in Warren County, uh, there's a lot of uh, situations going on there. And joining me now on the phone is Sheriff Martin Pace. And Sheriff, uh, talk to us about what you're seeing on the ground there in Warren County at this time. Wind right now, mainly just a wind event, very little rain. Of course, we're watching closely the, uh, the storm that you were just mentioning that's moving north of Warren County, just skating possibly the edge of the Eagle Lake community. 
uh, going on in the Issaquah and Sharkey County. We're also watching uh, the other storm that's developing. It looks like on radar, uh, as you've been reporting, it looks like within the next 10 or 15 minutes, uh, most of this is going to be on top of us. Uh, right now, we've thus far only had three trees down in the county. They're all being addressed at this time. Uh, our schools let out early, so we don't have school buses on the road, which is a good thing. Just encouraging people to find your safe place, and they need to be there now. They don't need to wait until the storm is on top of them and then try to move. We don't need an additional traffic load on the roads if we're experiencing 30, 40, 50 mile an hour winds. Uh, Sheriff, are there shelters open in the area right now? And if so, are there people in them? <clears throat> there are no shelters open that I am aware of. We've been in contact throughout the day with uh, John Elfer, who is our emergency management director. He's been in the EOC since about 5 a.m. Um, as a matter of fact, I just left there within the last hour. He's tracking everything. To my knowledge, uh, they have the EOC has not activated uh, any public shelters. There are, uh, of course, a number of, of locations that people are, are choosing to stay in. Uh, anybody that's in uh, mobile homes, especially, are encouraged to to go to a, a shelter or that you know a structure as a that would be more substantial than a mobile home. What we're seeing now again is just the the preliminary win. So I don't want the public to be lulled into thinking what we're seeing now is all that's going to happen because the worst, of course, is just still across the river. Yeah, what is your biggest concern about this storm as it comes across the river? Just the wind event. Uh, the wind event is uh, many times much more devastating uh, than just the torrential rain. The rain, of course, causes flash flooding, and, and you've heard the old adage for years, uh, you know, turn around, don't drown, which is always a problem. But in this type of event where we have such uh, a robust front with uh, the straight line winds, uh, this can damage rooftops. It can bring trees and power lines down. That, of course, affects traffic and it can affect structures. It's just uh, it can be a very damaging event, even without a tornado. Sheriff Martin Pace, thank you for your time. I'm sure we'll be checking in with you uh, uh, throughout the afternoon and the evening. Thank you for, very much for joining us. Yes, sir. And we are following more breaking news out of Jackson. Heavy winds from the storms have knocked over a tree at the governor's mansion, landing on a fence. Uh, here are some video that we've had from our, our crews in downtown Jackson that you're going to see here. This is a, a fence that, that a tree that fall, fallen over on the fence down there. Uh, this is the side of the uh, entranceway into the governor's mansion. You can see the tree that's fallen down into the street, so not onto the actual property of the governor's mansion, but on the street. Uh, 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 right by the governor's mansion, but it hit the fence and it looks like there's been no really damage to anything or anyone was uh, uh, injured or any damage to any uh, vehicles in the area. Uh, but just to, an idea of how strong the winds are, 12 News' Tal Ta is at the scene. We'll get a live update from her uh, shortly uh, as more information comes in. But already we're seeing the gust of winds and the powerful winds, as, as the sheriff said down in Warren County, uh, that's what we're seeing a lot of. And we're now we're going to go back over to Chief Meteorologist Ken South with more on what we can talk about. And Ken, this seems to be uh, what we're seeing, a, a strong wind event at this point, except for folks who are up there, I guess, what, it's the County right now? Yes, and that's where it's a little bit more serious. In fact, we are in communication with the folks of the National Weather Service, and they are seeing an increase in the circulation uh, with this storm right there embedded within the squall line right around Transylvania and um, Jacob, do you have tornado warning right now for okay. Warren and Yazoo? So. Okay. All right, so yeah, so we're going to have multiple tornado warnings. I'm going to talk about the Issaquah and Sharkey one, and I'm, I'll send it over to you for the okay. Warren County um, one. So just want to mention that the increase in circulation is happening right now, right around um, Transylvania, where we were pointing out just a few minutes ago. And if you take a look at this, notice there is a cluster now of lightning strikes right there. Just by looking at that, you can tell that there's uh, an increase in chaos and motion within the storm. That's an indication that it is strengthening. The circulation is tightening. So this could put down a tornado at any minute now in this area of this line moving northeast at about 60 miles per hour. We're going to zoom into this. We're going to track it for a few minutes and I'm going to turn it over uh, to Jacob because he's going to be tracking that circulation a little bit farther to the south moving into Warren County. So let's take a look at Live Eye Max 2 full screen and we're going to concentrate on this tornado warning right here. In fact, let's take a look at uh, the warnings. 
And there you go. We've got uh, this tornado warning. In fact, um, it is still going to be in effect until 315 for Issaquina and Sharkey counties. Um, right now it is about five minutes before three o'clock, so at least 20 more minutes on this uh, tornado warning. But I want to zoom in here because I do think the rotating part of this line now is moving across the river into Sequina County and crossing Highway 1. In fact, let's just take a look at the velocity here and there you so, there you go. It sticks out right there that we have got uh, this rotation here and we're going to query some of these wind speeds and Negative 20 means those are winds moving toward the radar site. Positive 23, those are winds that are moving away from the radar site. So the rotation is right here. It is now east of the Mississippi River. It is in the state of Mississippi. So if we know where the rotation is, and it is right there, right along Highway 1, and we're going to push this back to the bottom and left portion of the screen, we know it's moving at 60 miles per hour. And we're going to track it right through the Rolling Fork area over the next 20 minutes. These are the places that are going to be in the path of this strengthening storm. We're talking about Egremont at 8 minutes after 3, Rolling Fork at 311. Again, the current time is four minutes before the top of the hour. So you've got exactly 15 minutes if you live in Rolling Fork before the rotating part of the storm and potentially a tornado moves into your area. You need to be in your safe spot right now. Uh, a few minutes after that, it's going to be moving across Mount Helena. Uh, that is right along Highway 61 in Sharkey County. So that's the latest with this tornado warning. But of course, Jacob was talking about a new tornado warning, which is a little bit farther to the south. And that does include now parts of Warren County. So I'll send it over to Jacob. Okay, thanks so much, Ken. Yeah, so again, Ken was just talking about this tornado, likely in Issaquina County that's moving north. We now have a tornado warning on the southern uh, side of that storm. It stretches from Tallulah into Warren County, southern Issaquina, and into Yazoo County. So this new tornado warning goes until 4 p.m., and it includes... There is Aquina, Sharkey, Warren, and Yazoo County. So this is radar indicated rotation that's back in Louisiana and is likely heading towards the east uh, pretty rapidly. The wind speed with this storm is moving northeast at 65 miles per hour. So I want to turn on our warnings, show you who all is in this. So again, the tornado right now would be near Tallulah, but this includes Eagle Lake. Redwood, Russellville, Ball Ground, and Long Lake. This tornado warning is just north of downtown Vicksburg. However, it's not far. Redwood is included in this warning, and it goes downstream as well. So the tornado warning includes Phoenix, Satarsha, Tinsley, Bentonia, and Yazoo City again until 4 o'clock. So right now we're giving you a big heads up here. An hour heads up is when this storm would arrive in Yazoo County. Now is the time to seek a sturdy building that you can seek shelter in from a tornado. We need to get to our wind mode and show you where the rotation is because it is about to cross the Mississippi River here near Eagle Lake. So again, live MX 12 velocity mode. Green's going towards the weight at radar. Red's coming away. Way. And this is pretty strong rotation, folks, right here along the Mississippi River in northern Warren County. So right now, this is showing me about a 65 mile per hour winds. That would be a low end tornado that's approaching Eagle Lake here within moments. Eagle Lake, you do not have a big heads up. You need to seek shelter immediately in Eagle Lake and northern Warren County because this tornado is about to cross the Mississippi River if it has not already. It's minutes away here from crossing Highway 465 there along the Eagle Lake and Eagle Bend areas there in northern Warren County. So the storm likely uh, produced a tornado near Tallulah, and that's when the warning was issued just moments ago. It is now moving quickly near its over Ashley, and I bet our next radar scan puts it into Warren County across the Mississippi River. So again, this storm is moving rapidly at 65 miles per hour. I'm going to circle where the tornado is. It's approaching Eagle Lake here momentarily, and I'm going to put a storm track on this so we can give a big heads up to people down the line on when this is going to arrive. So 65 miles per hour is the forward speed. There's the storm here along the Mississippi River, and we're just going to track it out here and see our arrival time. So Eagle Lake, 
306, I think that's a little generous. You need to be in your safe place right now. Walsh, 315. Russellville there at 326. That's in northern Warren County. Satarsha, which is now in Yazoo County, at 332. So about 30 minutes away from entering Yazoo County. Yazoo City, this rotation would arrive closer to 345 and Benton around 350. So again, a possible tornado there between Tallulah and Eagle Lake. About to cross the Mississippi River, it will cross 465, and then say in about 10, 15 minutes, we'll cross Highway 61. And it looks like we got another tornado warning extended up there, Ken, north, uh, if you want to look at that as well. So this tornado warning, again, continues for Warren, Issaquina, Sharkey, and Yazoo counties until 4 o'clock. That's a whole hour. So we knew that this line of storms would likely have damaging winds and embedded tornadoes. That's exactly what we're seeing here. So there's the rotation near Ashley. This is Louisiana. This is Warren County. So there's Eagle Lake. Our ETA needs to be updated. I need to drag this storm track, and we'll see if it gives us an update. So now Eagle Lake there, uh, not long, less than five minutes. And this storm would arrive towards Satarsha around 3.30. So I just want to uh, slide this just a little bit more and give us that updated time. Uh, so the uh, National Weather Service saying that there's still Boeing surges along this line, and that's what that new tornado warning is downstream for Sharkey counties. So again, the wide view shows kind of a wall of tornado warnings in the Mississippi Delta. So tornado warnings now for Issaquina, Northern Warren, Sharkey, Humphreys, and Yazoo counties. This southern tornado warning goes until 4 o'clock, and that northern tornado warning goes until 4 o'clock as well. So that's what we're watching there. We also, I want to mention this, we have a new severe thunderstorm warning for Claiborne and Hines counties. This is where we're seeing strong winds approach. And um, I want to make sure that there's not any rotation in this. I don't see much, so that's good news. But again, this severe thunderstorm warning, there's that strong line of winds. Okay, so it, the threat is there is a possible tornado with 60 mile per hour winds in this line that is also about to cross the Mississippi River. And that's heading towards Port Gibson and Yachtney and Vicksburg, southern Warren and Claiborne counties. Eventually, this will move into Hines County. And that severe thunderstorm warning is until 4 p.m. So, to kind of recap here, we have a new severe thunderstorm warning. Morning for Claiborne, Warren, and Hines County until 4 o'clock. Damaging winds about to cross the Mississippi River into Vicksburg and Port Gibson. That'll be in Edwards, Bovina, say in 30 to 45 minutes with damaging winds, maybe rotation. So we could see a tornado warning issued there. Here's the tornado that's about to near Eagle Lake and eventually will move into Yazoo County. And then there's a new tornado warning up in the Delta. And for that update, I'm going to send it over to Chief Meteorologist Ken South. All right, uh, thank you, Jacob, for the good updates there. I believe the expiration for all of the warnings, the tornado warnings and the severe thunderstorm warnings, they all expire in just under an hour at uh, 4 p.m. So all current warnings are going to be in effect throughout the 3 o'clock hour. And this one, this is our newest tornado warning here. This is the reason we came on the air because this. Uh, line was coming in from northeastern Louisiana. We had good indications of rotations, plural, more than one along this line. So they issued a tornado warning that included areas across the river in Issaquina and Sharkey counties. Well, now that the line is across the river, they've extended that tornado warning farther upstream to the northeast to include the rest of Sharkey County and also a good portion of Humphreys County and then areas farther to the north as well. I believe that's Washington and Sunflower and maybe up to parts of southern Lafleur counties as well. So it's all because of this line and the rotation that we have uh, within the line. Now, it's still a radar-indicated rotation here. We don't have anything that's confirmed on the ground uh, with this, but we don't want to take any chances with this because it could uh, put down a tornado. So just go ahead, get in your safe spot, stay there until the warning is done. Let's go ahead and take a look at Live Eye Max 2 full screen, and we'll show you what we're dealing with right now in Issaquina and Sharkey County. So we're just going to take a look at the velocity product right now and what you're looking at is the wind speed and the wind direction at cloud level within the storm so we're going to zoom on in right there to Issaquina County that's where the rotating part of the storm is now passing to the east of Highway 1 pretty close uh, to the Myersville area right now we'll query some of these wind speeds and 
We're looking at a 19 mile per hour wind moving toward the radar site and 28 mile per hour the other way. So 20 and 30, that's about 50 miles per hour moving in a rotating fashion right there to the east of Highway 1 and just to the southeast of Myersville in Issaquina County. So it's not going to be long before this is going to be in Sharkey County and crossing that major highway of Highway 61 and getting into some more populated areas. More specifically, we're looking at Rolling Fork. Uh, it could pass to the south or maybe very close to the city of Anguilla as well. So if you live in either of those locations, again, your time is running short. We've been warning you now for a good 30 minutes or more about this storm moving in your area. Well, it's just about on top of you now. So now is the time to get into that safe spot and stay there. So we're going to clear this up. I want to circle the rotation once again so we can track this out for you. Now the other uh, new information that we've got about this particular uh, rotating part of the squall line is that it is moving a little bit more slowly than it was before. Now it's still moving quickly, but the forward speed has gone down from 65 to 60 to down down to about 55 miles per hour. So that we've already plugged that in uh, to Live IMAX 12. We'll put this on the bottom left portion of the screen, and at 55 miles per hour. It's going to be tracking through Sharkey and into Humphreys County over the next 30 minutes. And here are the places that are going to be in the path of that storm. Specifically, we're talking about Rolling Fork at 315. The current time is six minutes after three. So you've got less than 10 minutes now. If you live in the Rolling Fork area, Anguilla 320, Ritchie at 327, Potosi at 331, and Louise, which is in Humphreys County, it's going to be there at close to the bottom of the hour at about 334. So that gives you a little bit of an idea about when uh, this potential tornado could be moving across your area. So we've mentioned some of the communities. Let's zoom in a little bit more closer, and some of the smaller communities are going to be popping up here, uh, along with some of the uh, roadways in Issaquina and Sharkey County. So there's your rotation east of Myersville. It's going to be moving, it looks like, uh, across Highway 14 here in just the next minute or two. It is about three miles or about three minutes or so from crossing Highway 14 uh, near the Rolling Fork area. Uh, uh, let's see, let's get some more of these streets as we get closer in here. Of course, Rolling Fork, a populated area, so a lot of streets are popping in here, like Carter Brothers Road, Bear Lake Road, Matthews Boulevard, Sandy Bayou Road, and this is Yelverton Road. All of these areas right around the Rolling Fork area. Then right up Highway 61, we have the historic home of Mount Helena, and a little bit farther up the road, we've got the city of Anguilla. If I mentioned any of these roads that are near you, if you live near these communities, these towns, you've only got a couple minutes now before the rotating part of this line reaches your area. You need to be in your shelter right now. When we say shelter, we're talking about a basement or a storm shelter. If you don't have that. You need to get to a sturdy structure, a small interior room on the lowest floor, like a bathroom, a hallway, or a closet, and preferably a windowless room. You don't need to waste time uh, opening a window that doesn't do any good in a situation like this. And if you're close to a window, the glass can break and you can be hurt that way. So you need to be in a small interior room, putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible, because there very well could be uh, a tornado moving through your area over the next several minutes. Even if it doesn't put down a tornado, the squall line is going to produce heavy rain and potentially damaging winds in the order of 60, 70 miles per hour or possibly even stronger. We've got the potential of even up to 80 mile per hour straight line winds as the squall line moves from west to east across uh, Mississippi this afternoon. So a little bit farther down the line, we're looking at uh, Humphreys County. You've got a little bit more time uh, with this particular part of the line. Let's go ahead and track out from the rotation right there. Now just to the uh, west of Rolling Fork, it's going to be in the Louise area in southern Humphreys County in about 25 minutes or so. Silver City in about 30 minutes. So that's the, the uh, easternmost extent of the tornado warning. You do have some lead time if you live in Humphreys County or these communities. So you need to watch this closely 
and get ready to get into that safe spot as the storm approaches your area. Now, for more on what's happening farther to the south in Warren County, I'm going to send it over to Jacob. Yeah, thanks, Ken. So, again, it looks like that a possible tornado might have gone just over Eagle Lake. The National Weather Service saying that there could have been a tornado that just hit Eagle Lake. So, this is very tight rotation. I don't see any debris on Live MX 12, but, you know, with a more rural area, it, we don't necessarily have to have debris to have a confirmed tornado. So, we're watching this circulation. It has now moved through Eagle Lake. So, uh, we'll know pretty soon if it caused damage. I can query these winds for us, though. And again, that's showing me nearly 85 mile per hour rotation just north of Eagle Lake. So, that would be near Newman Road now, uh, crossing on the Warren County and Issaquina County line. And if this storm holds together, which it has for the last couple minutes, it's going to be approaching Valley Park and Walsh, crossing Highway 61 there in a couple of minutes. Uh, we already have this storm moving at 65 miles per hour, so I can give a quick ETA for that. Valley Park in less than 10 minutes is when it's going to cross Highway 61. So again, tight rotation there. Uh, the National Weather Service uh, not giving us confirmation of anything yet, and we don't have any debris on Live Max 12. But that could certainly have been a tornado that just crossed over Eagle Lake, and it's tracking towards Highway 61. So if you live here in southern Issaquina County, even northern Warren County, please seek shelter north of Redwood on Highway 61 up towards Walsh and there into Issaquina, and then eventually Sharkey County. So just because this is a tight rotation, I want to zoom in and show us some of the roads here. So again, there's Eagle Lake. Here's the rotation. That would be near Blackstock Road, Newman Road, Summerall Road, and down the road, or down the line here, uh, this would be approaching Adden Road um, and uh, Frisbee Road near Highway 61. So Valley Park, Hardy, Walsh there on Highway 61 in southern Sharkey County and Issaquina counties. Seek shelter now. There's a possible tornado right here that just moved through Eagle Lake that is tracking towards you. So you need to be in your tornado safe place. We've had this tornado warning for a minute. So you need to be there. Oh, right now. Elsewhere, we still have uh, new severe thunderstorm warnings further south. I wanted to mention this damaging winds moving into Natchez right now with severe thunderstorm warning for y'all. And that goes for Adams County, Jefferson County here until four o'clock. So radar indicated 60 mile per hour winds. Just wanted to mention that because damaging winds, a big threat for us today. Not seeing much rotation here on Live IMAX 12. And as we head up here, Highway 61 towards Port Gibson, Claiborne County, Warren County, in this severe thunderstorm warning polygon that extends all the way into Hines County. This is damaging winds as well that have just crossed the Mississippi River. So strong winds, again, a primary threat for us. Lots of lightning there as well. And that shows us where that hard line of damaging winds is. We'll have to watch there near Port Gibson soon. Looks like a little bit of a kink in the line there. I don't see much rotation on Live MX 12, but that could be a precursor uh, to some rotation. So we still have those tornado warnings up north here in the Delta for Issaquina, Sharkey, Humphreys, Yazoo, and Warren counties. Those go until 4 o'clock. And it looks like here, at least on Live MX 12 wind mode, that the strongest rotation is now between Eagle Lake and Highway 61. Right now, this is Issaquina County. This is kind of the weird notch on the bottom of Issaquina County, but that's where the rotation would be. Uh, right now between Brunswick and Valley Park and is now just minutes away from Highway 61. So if there's a tornado, it is right now over Newman Road in Issaquina County heading towards Highway 61 and Valley Park. There's Newman Road. There's where the tornado would be. Uh, there is 40 Road, Atwood Road, Valley Park, Reicher Road, Highway 61. Please seek shelter now. This certainly could touch down. Uh, at any time. So I think um, that Scotland Williams is in Warren County. If, if we can go to Scotland, I don't know, Scotland, where you are relative to this tornado that might have moved through Eagle Lake, but tell us where you are and what you're seeing right now. We are on I-20 eastbound, He's still here in Warren County, and we're heading towards Bovina and Tippentown Road. So I'm going to turn this around so that you can uh, see what we're looking at. And again, this is I-20 eastbound heading towards Bovina. So right now, we're going to Tippentown Road because emergency management has reported that a tree is down there. We also went to Lee Road and Gibson Roads in Warren County because there was a large tree down there. There, but crews responded very quickly, and by the time we got there, the tree was already being cleared out of the roadway. So now we're heading towards the next destination for the next down tree, but crews could very well be there as well. 
but we are within a severe thunderstorm warning right now and it is in effect for a couple parishes in northeastern Louisiana and here in Mississippi it's in effect for Warren County, Claiborne County, Hines County and northwestern Capaya County and that will be in effect until four o'clock and right now it's about 3 15 so for the next 45 minutes or so we'll have this severe thunderstorm warning and I said earlier we want to treat these like tornado warnings because as we're seeing the main line or the leading edge of the line at least hasn't even made it to where we are and we're already seeing those down trees with those non-severe wind damages. So um, again, we will let you know once we get there and what we're seeing, but right now not much rain since we are still ahead of the main line, but still those strong winds are doing damage even outside of the main thunderstorms. Off to the north of us also, uh, Ken South and Jacob Lanier have been tracking those tornado warnings, so I will send it back to the All right, thank you, Scott. Lee. You've been talking a lot about those trees down, and we have a big tree that fell down at the governor's mansion not too long ago, just outside of the governor's mansion. And Tao Ta is down there, and the tree fell onto the street from and uh, knocked over a fence. Uh, Tao, describe what you're seeing and, uh, and and what's going on, and anybody, uh, Danny, any other damage down there, or anybody hurt from that tree falling? Yeah, hey, Byron. So thankfully, there are no injuries, at least no. No people were involved. There were no injuries involving people, but there is property damage, as you mentioned. Uh, the fence to the governor's mansion is pretty much uh, crushed due to the massive oak tree. But I'm just going to step aside, and as you can see and hear, there are multiple crews on scene right now. I'm going to try and zoom in and show you exactly how it's looking like. Uh, crews are just right now trying to cut this massive oak tree to pieces right now. Um, basically, like I said, there is no are no injuries. But again, the fence to the governor's mansion is pretty much crumbled here. We do see state capitol police on scene just kind of directing traffic. We're along West Street and Capitol Street. Now, people can still come by here, drive by the roundabout. But again, just if you do, just make sure to slow down and be careful because, again, we are seeing um, this huge oak tree that crews are working on right now to, to get up to clear the scene pretty much. Um, we did not see the governor, but again, when I did speak with State Capitol Police, they did mention to me that uh, there were no injuries, and crews I mentioned, or I spoke to, said it's going to take about a, oh, an hour and a half for this cleanup to be uh, cleared, pretty much. Right now, reporting in Jackson, Tell Talk Talk News. Now, it's good to know that uh, no one was injured, but there was damage down there. And we know the governor did uh, tweet out some pictures of that and mentioned that the tree had fallen in for people to be safe. But we can see how strong the winds are down there in downtown Jackson. Uh, we also, as we mentioned, are hearing from the governor over the fallen tree at the governor's mansion. And he's telling all Mississippians to stay safe, to seek shelter as the storms approach the Jackson metro area. Uh, let's now take a look at some. Uh, this is his tweet and some of the pictures he put on his uh, Twitter page where he's talking about the frontline winds along the Mississippi River and the pictures that he took uh, when he tweeted that out as the uh, after the tree fell on the governor's mansion. As Tao was showing you, uh, you can see the wind blowing just in downtown Jackson, how strong those winds are while she was talking to us and the, uh, and the damage that tree uh, caused from falling over onto the street and, and knocking down the, the portion of the fence uh, surrounding the, the governor's mansion there. Uh, and you can see the clouds behind me that too are, are really dark and we're uh, just at the beginning of this storm, as Scotland mentioned, we're not even in the thick of things yet and we're seeing damage from uh, heavy winds. Uh, Scotland Williams now. We're going to go back to her as she is at a site where some trees are, are down and they're cleaning some things up. And Scotland, once again, where are you and what's your location at this point? All right, so we have made it to our destination. This is Tiffintown Road here in Warren County, and emergency management had reported that a tree was down, and you can see crews are still arriving here, and they are now get, trying to uh, saw into the tree. It's, I mean, it's a large tree that is down across the road. We may have a vehicle kind of cross the shot really quickly, but um, we're sitting here, and this is ahead of the leading edge of the storms that are moving in. Those are just now crossing the Mississippi River and we are a little east of the main line so this just goes to show the winds we were expecting, the high wind warning that's in effect, everything is happening ahead of the storms just as we thought it would. I mean these strong wind gusts that we've seen, they've toppled over large trees across the area so far. There was another large tree here in Warren County that was down and that was on Lee Road and Gibson Roads where they meet and 
Crews responded there quickly, and by the time we got there, it was being moved out of the roadway. But you can still see here the large tree, no one can cross. Um, crews are going to work here, so we're going to stay and continue to provide updates. But for now, that's all we have. We're really not seeing much rain because, again, as I've said, the main line is not quite here, but we're going to stay out here and continue to provide everyone updates. Scotland, as you can probably see behind me of our uh, tower cam of the Capitol Towers, that the camera has been shaking there. You can see the force of the winds uh, that are happening now. We can take a look in the, as we bounce around the, uh, the metro area with some traffic cams just to give you an idea of what things look like out there throughout the, the area uh, as the storm is beginning to uh, pass over central Mississippi. Uh, you know, a, a heavy wind, some rain. Uh, this is the, or our location that we are looking at right now. Uh, this is going to be along uh, Mississippi. Uh, as we talk about, this is Highway 1 in Greenville, as you can see, and you can see that the rain conditions there, it's very wet, but not as windy as it is in Jackson, but the rain is coming down in that part. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of rain in Jackson yet, but we're getting all the wind. So, as Scotland mentioned, we are at the beginning of this storm, and uh, we have a long ways to go as uh, things pass through. So, let's now send things back over to Ken South, Chief Meteorologist Ken South, with more than we can expect. And Ken, any idea how strong the winds are in downtown Jackson at this hour? Yeah, we're looking at, I uh, believe Jacob may have more information about that. But at least uh, we're looking at 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts, and they could be even stronger as we get later in the afternoon. We know the winds are stronger farther to the west. All the reports that we've gotten so far, downtown Jackson, and uh, a little bit ahead of the line from Scotland is ahead of the squall line. Within the squall line itself, we're looking at uh, the potential for 60, 70 mile per hour winds or stronger, and those are just straight line winds. At different parts of this line, uh, we could see. Some rotating winds as well, and that's where we've got the tornado warnings. That's the whole reason we're on the air right now. Take a look at this line here. It just looks like a solid line. Just by looking at the line, you wouldn't know where those rotations are and where a potential tornado would be. So we can't just look at the radar in this instance. We have to look at our velocity so we can see where the winds are kind of turning in on themselves, where the rotating part of this line is. And I can tell you that we've been tracking it right there. Now east of Eagle Lake, a rotation right there. Doesn't look as pronounced as it did, but then also a little bit farther up the line, right along Highway 61 now. We're looking at uh, rotation now, moving into Sharkey County, right around the Rolling Fork area. So both of these areas have prompted tornado warnings. In fact, take a look at them. We've got two red polygons right there. Uh, we're going to zoom out so we can see both of those. Both of these tornado warnings are set to expire at the top of the next hour at 4 o'clock. That's about uh, 38 minutes uh, from right now. We'll see what happens farther downstream, but I would be very close attention to this if you live to the east of there, because once we get close to the top of the next hour or past 4 o'clock, these may be extended into your area if these rotations uh, do hold together. So let's go ahead and take a look at Live Eye Max 2 full screen. I'm going to concentrate on the tornado warning farther to the north because it's been a few minutes since we looked at that storm. Jacob's going to handle the one farther south. I'll uh, handle the one a little bit uh, farther to the north here. And here, once again, is a look at the reflectivity. And you're just looking at a solid line, but we want to look inside there to find out where we've got uh, the strongest and rotating winds. And as we zoom in, Right here, you're going to notice now near Rolling Fork. We've been mentioning Rolling Fork uh, for the past several minutes. Well, the rotating part of this line is over you now. You're getting the strongest winds. So now it's going to be shifting to the east of there at about 55 miles per hour. That's the forward motion of this part of the line of storm. So we'll clear this out and let's just uh, turn on the velocity. And we're going to circle where we have got the rotating part of this. And I think it's right now shifting to the east of Highway 61 between Rolling Fork and Anguilla. So that's where the rotating part of this squall line of severe weather is. It's moving to the north and east at about 55 miles per hour. So we're going to track it out through the edge of Humphreys County. We're talking about the eastern part of southern Humphreys County over the next 30 minutes. And these are now the places that are going to be in the path of the storm. I want to tell you, though, if you live east, or excuse me, if you live west, if you live west of Highway 61, 
the rotating part of this is now to your east, so I do want to sound the all clear. If you live in the northern part of Issaquina County where this moved through, or if you live, say, Rolling Fork or anywhere to the west of Rolling Fork and you've been in your safe spot and you've been waiting for us to tell you that it's okay, I think, again, if you live west of Highway 61, if you live west of Rolling Fork, uh, the worst of it is now quickly passing to your east at about 55 miles per hour. But that means it's getting closer to these places. Louise at about 339, midnight at 341, Silver City at 347, and Roseneath at about 315. I believe all of those places are actually in Humphreys County. So. The uh, eastern part of Sharkey, let's say the northeastern part of Sharkey County and the southern part of Humphreys County is where the squall line is going to be moving, the rotating part of the squall line moving into your area with uh, the potential for damaging winds and a tornado. So we'll clear this up once again. I'm going to zoom in uh, to this area. Right there, you see where the rotation is um, along and east of Highway 61, south of Anguilla. And here's some of those uh, major streets. Highway 14, it's popping up there just downstream, just on the east side of the storm. We're looking at Sandy Bayou Road, also Perkins Road, Keith Road, and Violet Road as we're getting into Humphreys County. This is the community of uh, Louise that's. Uh, right around the intersection of Highway 14 and Highway 149, uh, just north of Louise there. So any area right here over the next several minutes is going to be in the path of the storm, and it's going to get there in short order because it is moving quickly still to the north and east at about 55 miles per hour. It should be crossing Highway 14 right around the county line of Sharkey and Humphreys in about 10 minutes. It's moving at close to a mile a minute, so it's 10 miles away, but that's only 10 minutes away crossing Highway 14 just to the west of the Louise area. So that's the latest on the tornado warning that we've got now in Sharkey and Humphreys counties. Let's uh, focus our attention now a little bit farther to the south on the tornado warning for, uh, I believe, Yazoo and Warren County. So we'll send it over to Jacob. And then also, uh, with uh, south of what Ken was tracking, we also have these strong winds moving into Vicksburg right now. We have a camera in Warren County. I don't know if we can see that right now. There's strong winds right now moving through the I-20 area, uh, through Vicksburg, Warren County, heading towards Bovina. Wow, there's the Mississippi River right now from the Ameristar Casino. So we're looking right in to the heart of this storm right now. You can see the torrential rain, visibility very low. Uh, winds very strong. It's hard to make out, but in the center of your screen on the bridge, you can see the American flag is fully straight up there. That means very strong winds. And I think our gusts right now in Vicksburg are 45 to 50 miles per hour. So really heavy rain as that storm moves through Vicksburg. And as we come back to Live IMAX 12 radar here, I'm going to zoom in and show you how strong these winds are. So again, Vicksburg, Yachtney, Edwards learned it in this severe thunderstorm warning for the damaging winds here along Highway 61, Port Gibson as well. But strong winds there. I want to zoom in here to Vicksburg. We could see some damage in Vicksburg, and this is not a tornado. This is what we were talking about. Again, winds now 60 to 70 miles per hour, 62 miles per hour there in downtown Vicksburg. That can knock over trees. That could uh, uh, knock down things that are on the roadways. That could roll debris around. And I want to query, we just got an update on the radar scan here, just showing just strong winds here in the Vicksburg area. And that's where we could see some damage here moving through Warren County. So that's why we have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect. You just saw it on the screen as we overlooked uh, the Mississippi River Bridge at Vicksburg. To the north, we still have two tornado warnings circulation there in Sharkey counties and also kind of on the Issaquina Warren County line and also further up towards Hollandale. I want to point out that we actually have had damage from this tornado warning now in Eagle Lake. So I just want to share that with you. Um, and maybe we can get some one of our teams to head here. Uh, the Warren County EMA is saying that two trees are downed along Sea Island Drive in Eagle Lake. And also the emergency manager is saying that a roof has been blown off of a home in Eagle Lake. And remember about 30 minutes ago in Eagle Lake, that's where we were telling you to seek shelter immediately. We thought a tornado was crossing the Mississippi River into Eagle Lake. Of course, it'll take a day or so to confirm a tornado, but with damage like trees down, a roof off of a home in Eagle Lake, we likely could have seen a spin up there in northern Warren County. So, again, 
We need to treat these storms seriously, these brief spin ups. And there's more damage coming out of Warren County now, Bovina and, say, the Beachwood areas on the south side of town. That's where we're seeing uh, some wind damage as well. That's what these icons are. So already several reports of wind damage. Now in Port Gibson, Warren up towards Eagle Lake, that Eagle Lake may have been caused um, by the possible tornado. And again, there's that official report from the emergency manager, a roof off of a house on Lowstow Road at Eagle Lake. And that is exactly where we had that possible tornado. And I'll even take us back in time here. So right now it's 3.30. As we go back, yep, that would be a tornado right there, probably just after 3 a.m. or 3 p.m. Uh, and so that's why we have several damage reports of trees down, roofs off a home there near the Highway 465 area in Eagle Lake. So hopefully, yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, so Scotland is heading to this area, so she'll have more details on the damage in Eagle Lake from a possible tornado uh, that moved through about 30 minutes ago. And now that circulation is approaching Spanish Fort and Holly Bluff. Not quite as strong now, but still. These greens and reds, they're right here together, folks, in Holly Bluff and Spanish Fort. Let's query these winds um, and see how strong our winds rotation is right now. Uh, it looks like about 60 mile per hour winds here. And that would be, if there's a tornado, it's going to be near 15 mile bayou um, and kind of on the Boyd Road area, so Tarsha Road out of Holly Bluff. Um, and near East Levy Road, 15 mile bayou. So that is where this tornado would likely be, which is. Of course, here in southern Sharkey County, moving into northern Yazoo County. That would be near the Panther Swamp area as well in the northwest corner of Yazoo. So there could be a tornado right there near Holly Bluff crossing uh, the river um, or the bayou there into Yazoo County. So that's a rotation area we're going to have to watch. Ken's been tracking some up here as well, north of Anguilla near Hollandale. And moving south, this is something we're going to have to watch as well. This leading edge of rotation near between Vicksburg and Bovina. We'll have to watch that for the next few scans because that could be rotation as well. Just north of I-20 near Woodlawn, tracking just north of Bovina. That could be rotation as well. I'm going to take this back in time. Notice how the winds came into Vicksburg. We saw those damage reports. Now it's surging ahead of the line just a little bit, and that's all it takes to get some rotation in this type of squall line. And notice even there a little bit of a kink. So if there would be a brief spin up here, it could be near Lankford Drive, Freetown Road, Tucker Road, north of Bovina, Flowers Hill Road, and from Woodlawn to the east. Not a tornado warning for Warren County here, uh, but that could be a brief spin up. And further south, we're just watching uh, damaging winds as well. Severe thunderstorm warnings continue up and down this line. So, again, folks, as expected, this is a solid line of warnings. Damaging winds and tornadoes moving across central Mississippi. I know people in Jackson are saying, oh, we haven't seen rain or storms all day. It's on the way. It's this solid line, and it looks like we just got a new severe thunderstorm warning uh, down near Franklin and Jefferson counties. So that now includes Union Church, Roxy, Meadville, and Butte, and that severe thunderstorm warning goes until 415. And the National Weather Service saying there could be a tornado briefly spin up in this as well. And as we look at velocity, our wind product here, maybe some brief rotation near Natchez State Park or up towards Fayette. So just some things that we're going to have to watch along this line. Also, again, watching for rotation near Bovina. That looks suspicious to me. Um, right there between Redwood and Bovina, I want to query this. Um, if you're in Youngton here, so that's 50 mile per hour rotation north of Bovina. There's not a tornado warning for this area, but that could be a spin up here at any moment in Warren County. So if you live in Redwood, Bovina, Youngton, please seek shelter now. Uh, this could be again a brief spin up here at any moment as that rotation moves north and east. So I'm just going to put a track on this. Again, no tornado warning this, but I'm going to give you an early heads up. I'm seeing rotation there between Villanova and Bovina. And it's moving to the north and east. So as we put a track on that, Youngton here in about 10 minutes. That's right there on the Big Black River and towards Nevada as well in Hines County. So I think this would stay north of Edwards, but it would be north of I-20 there in Warren County crossing the Big Black River into Hines County if that um, 
could possibly be a tornado. So several circulations. And again, folks, with this line of damaging winds, these tornadoes are going to spin up in five minutes and spin right back down. So it's going to be hard to ID every single one on Live IMAX 12. So every rotation we see, we're just going to tell you about it. And that's certainly one that I think uh, is in a little bit more populated area near Redwood, Bovina, and Youngton. So again, North Bovina, we could have a spin up right now. So you need to be in your safe place in Warren County, please. Don't be out uh, driving around. And then circulations as well extend well up into the Delta. Chief Meteorologist Ken South is watching those tornado warnings up towards Issaquina, Sharkey, and Humphreys counties. Ken? Yeah, thank you, Jacob. Uh, we're watching for the those areas within this line that are bowing out. We're looking for any kind of notches. That's where we would uh, find some kind of rotation. Um, we're seeing a lot of that within this line here. I believe that there's one right there near Holly Bluff. Uh, that's a little bit uh, to the south and east of Rolling Fork. What we were tracking earlier is southeast of Anguilla, right up here along the line. So basically this entire line, you can consider it severe, and we could see a tornado being generated, uh, embedded within this line, really at any moment along the line as it moves to the east at about 55 miles per hour. Let's also take a look at the uh, lightning. I'm going to turn on the lightning with this because I am noticing that we're getting uh, clusters of lightning strikes um, right there. Yeah, right there within that line. Uh, a couple hundred lightning strikes over just the past a few minutes, which tells us that at least this part of the line is beginning to intensify uh, just a bit. I'm going to track this out uh, to the east now, and we'll track this entire line from Anguilla to Holly Bluff. This is Sharkey and Yazoo counties. I'm going to track it out to the northeast at about uh, 55 miles per hour. So this is going to take it through northern Yazoo and southern Humphreys counties, these areas in the path of the storm, as we go through the rest of the 3 o'clock hour. So we're looking at uh, Holly Bluff at about 338, Potosi at 345, Louise 347, Yazoo Junction at about 4 o'clock, and uh, passing through uh, Z Z Zellaria. I'm not sure if that's exactly how you pronounce that, but uh, if you live around there, you probably know the community that I'm talking about. So it's going to be at the top of the four o'clock hour when the squall line moves in. And again, we're looking at uh, places that are rotating uh, within this line. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, Live IMAX 2 full screen, and we will clear this up for you just a little bit. And I'm noticing again right there. It looks a little bit pronounced, more pronounced in this last radar scan, uh, that rotation. strong winds. Usually when that happens, it's because of lightning in the area. We don't have very much lightning in the area. This is just about those very gusty winds developing out ahead of this squall line. So if they're that strong out ahead of the line, you know they're going to be even stronger within the line and possibly rotating. What I was saying just a few minutes ago is that we've been tracking now for really more than an hour that storm coming out of northeastern Louisiana. We've tracked it through Issaquina County through Sharkey County, and now it is actually looking a little bit uh, better. It's the uh, rotation looking uh, more pronounced uh, right now in eastern Sharkey County. So rotation right there. There you see the greens and the reds kind of uh, circling in on themselves right there. We're seeing the greens kind of bowing out. Those are winds that are moving toward the radar site, and then the reds are moving away. So this is where we've got rotating winds in the eastern part of 
Sharkey County. This is going to be just to the south of Highway 14. And I got to tell you that we've been mentioning the community of Louise a lot in northern, excuse me, in southern Humphreys County. And it looks like the rotating part of this line is actually moving directly toward southern Humphreys County and more particularly the community of Louise. So moving at 55 miles per hour, again, you don't have a whole lot of time. We're looking at uh, this potential tornado getting to your area in about five to seven minutes. It's only about seven miles away and it gets closer, of course, every minute because it is moving quickly. So hopefully you are already in your safe spot. If you are not, you need to get there right now. Uh, this storm moving quickly toward your area. Uh, it is definitely rotating with some very strong winds, potentially damaging winds are gonna be moving uh, just to the south of Highway 14 and then crossing Highway 49, 149 uh, in the Louisiana area. Let's say between midnight and the Yazoo Humphreys County line and Louise is right in the middle of that area. So again, five to seven minutes. It's only a few miles away from crossing into your area. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit more closely there. And I want to try to query some of these wind speeds that we're talking about here and take a look at that. This is what I'm talking about when I say it's more pronounced. You see the winds uh, rotating in on each other, and these are actually the strongest wind speeds that I've queried so far this afternoon. We've got 41 mile per hour winds moving that way, and then we've got about 30 mile per hour winds moving in this direction, the opposite direction. Add them together, and you've got about 70 mile per hour rotating winds right there. That could be putting down a tornado very soon, and it again is just a few minutes away from Highway 149, Highway 14, and the community of Louise. I would say less than seven minutes, more likely about five minutes because there's going to be a little bit of a delay in this radar scan. So this is going to be a minute or two old. Let's go ahead and send it back over to Jacob. Okay, thanks, Just wanted to share that we have a new tornado warning now for parts of the metro. Uh, this includes Warren, Hines, Yazoo, and Madison counties and was, is for the circulation that I was just showing you north of Bovina. So I gave you an early heads up before this tornado warning was even issued that we had tight rotation in northern Warren County near Bovina. And so now the National Weather Service has issued a long tornado warning until 430 that includes Bovina, Brownsville, Flora, Lake Caroline, Glugstadt, and Canton. This tornado warning goes until 430 and is likely going to scoot on the north and northwest side of the Jackson Metro, you need to seek shelter right now because this is some pretty tight rotation. So again, here's the red tornado warning polygon stretches from Warren County through Northern Hines. This is north of I-20, so Brownsville, Pocahontas, then towards Flora and Madison County, uh, Lake Caroline area, Reunion area, Glugstadt and Canton for the next 50 minutes. Again, tornado warnings continue for all of Yazoo County as well. But I just want to focus on this storm uh, pretty quickly because it's pretty uh, strong and tight rotation. It is right now near Youngton here in Warren County. So there's a possible tornado near Narrow Ga Gage Road, Halifax Road, Far Road, John Warren Road, uh, and Youngton Road here, right through Youngton in Warren County. And this is approaching the Big Black River. Um, so, so here we go. There's the Big Black River right here. Uh, there's Youngton, Warren County. Lynchburg is in Hines County. Brownsville is in Hines County. And there's the rotation that's about to cross the Big Black River if it has not already done so. So Lynchburg, Cox Ferry Road, Brownsville, Nevada, uh, Pocahontas, and say up towards the Vernon and Flora areas. Uh, and Pocahontas, seek shelter now. The tornado is coming downstream for you. And I want to time this out for us. Let's first query these winds right now near Youngton in Warren County. Uh, the National Weather Service issued this. Yes, yeah, so strong rotation here. 60 miles per hour plus 40. That's a 100 mile per hour rotation right here along the Big Black River, which is Narrow Gauge Road and Halifax Road. So a lot of these roads don't cross uh, the Big Black River. So there's, the, again, the winds updating now to near 85 mile per hour rotation near Youngton. So let's time this out. Uh, I'm going to highlight where the rotation is on Live IMAX 12 in Warren County near the Big Black River about to enter Hines County. And this storm, let's see, the, um, 
The storm for this tornado warning is moving east at 45 miles per hour, so not quite as fast as some other storms. I'm going to put it in as 50 uh, miles per hour and time this out. So there's kind of an update for you. Youngton at 344, that's right now. Youngton in uh, Warren County, seek shelter immediately. A Nevada, which is in Hines County, near, the, or near Madison County, Hines County line there. That's going to be at 356. Flora, 407. Lake Caroline, 418. Canton 427. So again, this is going to move through northern Hines County and western central Madison County over the next hour. So we need to be in our tornado safe place if you live here along the Big Black River from Brownsville up towards Flora. Please seek shelter right now. I don't see any debris here. There's certainly a lowering near Youngton, but no debris confirmed yet. We're going to watch that for you though, but very tight rotation there along the Big Black River. And again, this is about to enter Hines County. So again, a new tornado warning for Hines and Madison counties as this circulation is going to head towards Brownsville, Flora, and eventually Canton. We still have rotation up near Satarsha and still several tornado possibles along this line. Further south, a severe thunderstorm warnings continue for damaging winds. So that includes Carpenter, Claiborne County, Jefferson County, Franklin County, as well as that line moves off towards the east. And then the tornadoes, the line with lots of rotation, is up here from Edwards up towards Yazoo County and into um, Humphreys County there. And again, that's a, that's a really a defined hook there on this line, which to me signals that we could have uh, maybe more of a stronger tornado on the ground right now near Youngton, near the Lynchburg area, just south of Phoenix just west of Brownsville, but Brownsville seeks shelter now. It is uh, coming in your direction very quickly. And again, our winds are still very strong on this storm. Um, looks like 70 mile per hour rotation right there near the Big Black River. So the tornado likely now crossing into Hines County. This is not confirmed. Um, well, the National Weather Service uh, saying that though we don't see debris on radar, it is likely an ongoing tornado at the Big Black River. So I'm just going to stay with this a little bit longer because this is probably the strongest rotation we have right now in central Mississippi. So the tornado is near Youngton. Uh, it is going to pass just uh, near Lynchburg and then up towards Nevada, likely just north of Brownsville. So if you live from Brownsville on Cox Ferry Road, you need to seek shelter right now. As I'm going to zoom in and show you where some of these roads are. So there's the tornado near Youngton. A Halifax Road, seek shelter now. There's the Big Black River, Richardson Road, Far Road, Johnson Line Road, Frank Call, Cox Ferry. So there's the community of Nevada up there, which is in Hines County still, right there on the county line. There's Brownsville, and this tornado warning is going to move up towards Nevada and then towards Flora. So Flora, Vernon, Pocahontas, Livingston, we're giving you a big heads up to seek shelter right now in your tornado safe place. You are under this tornado polygon in well into Madison County. Again, folks, we're talking Annadale, Reunion, Livingston, Lake Caroline, Glugstadt, Nissan, Canton, more populated areas in Madison County. In about 30 to 40 minutes, we could have a tornado move through Madison County. So seek shelter now, go to that safe place, get the family there, get inside, get to a safe shelter. If you live in a mobile home, you have about 20 minutes or so before this circulation enters Madison County. Uh, and right now, yeah, so there's debris. So we now have a confirmed tornado in Hines County uh, just across the Big Black River. So this is Hines County now, and this yellow shows me that we have a confirmed tornado. So I'm going to circle that. This is our debris tracker. There's debris just north of Lynchburg. This is just a little bit north of I-20. So here's I-20, and there's Edwards. This is just north of y'all near the Lynchburg area, Cox Ferry, Brownsville. And that's a confirmed tornado now that we have on Live IMAX 12 in Hines County. And that debris aligns with our rotation, which is right here at Halifax Road. So again, likely we have a confirmed tornado on Halifax Road in Hines County. Um, and this is moving towards Cox Ferry Road, Johnson Line Road, and Frank Call Road as well. So please seek shelter right now. Uh, and as we're going to continue to watch this storm for you, again, a confirmed tornado in Hines County. There it is, right between Lynchburg and Phoenix, heading straight to Nevada and then straight into Flora. Flora is not far down the line. And again, just timing this out for us, Flora, you have about 
15 minutes or less until this tornado arrives. Again, this is a confirmed tornado. We're going to continue to watch this, but we still have circulations up in the Delta. So I'm going to send it back over to Chief Meteorologist Ken South for that update. All right. Thank you, Jacob. We do want to update the folks a little bit farther to the north in the Delta because they have rotating parts of this line in their area as well. I don't want to spend too much time on this before we get back to that uh, storm, which is now confirmed moving through the metro in Hines and into Madison County. So we'll spend just a few minutes here before we go back. Back, uh, to Jacob. So we do, once again, farther up the line, have a rotation here as well. So we're going to query some of these uh, wind speeds right around Potosi and then south of Louise right here. Let's go ahead and uh, query that. And we've seen about 50 mile per hour winds in this area right about there, and it's moving off to the northeast at about 55 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and track it. Um, it is now, I believe, the rotating part of this south of Louise. Let's go ahead and take a look at Live IMAX 2 full screen, and we're going to track this out through the southern part of Humphreys County over about the next 20 minutes or so. So these are the places that are going to be in the path of this potential tornado. Now, this is still a radar indicated rotation, but we have seen farther down the line, these storms can produce tornado. They can produce damage. So even though this is a radar indicated rotation right now, moving through Southern Humphreys County, we want you to play it safe, get into your safe spot and do that immediately because it's going to be around Lampkin at the top of the hour at 401, Roseneath at 404, Pluto at about six minutes after four and Eden at about eight minutes after uh, four o'clock. So again, these communities in the path of this severe line of storms that at a very minimum can produce damaging winds, but also we have the potential for a tornado here. Now we're going to send it over to Byron for just a minute. Again, we don't want to spend uh, too much time here before we send it back to Jacob. So for just a minute, he's got some more information for us. All right, thank you, Ken. And joining me over the phone right now is Adams County Sheriff Travis Patton. And Sheriff Patton, uh, you know, Adams County tends to get hit a lot with the uh, when these storms come through. What are you guys doing down there right now, and how are things looking at this hour? Right now, with the rain, we have several down power lines that, uh, that are down. We have trees down. Even before the rain came through, we had power lines being snapped. At this time, South Wind Road is still closed. And the, road crews, the road crews can't clear the roadway until some of the storm passes, but it's coming down hard and heavy and fast down here. That yeah, yeah and, and I know last week you had damage from last week's storm. And what are you telling folks down there in Adams County uh, what they should be doing right now? Right now, we have been warning them to stay off the streets and stay bunkered down right now. Because, like I said, right now in Adams County, we have 795 customers in the county on Southwest without power at this time. And our neighboring county as well is getting hit hard down there because the county, because right now they have over 2,000 customers without power. So uh, we're telling people to bark it down right and let this thing pass. Even once it, once it passes, we need people to stay shelters to give us a chance to get the road crews, crews uh, to clear the highways and byways out there. Are, are there shelters open in the county, and are people in them if they are open? Yes, there are shelters. The shelter, safe room here at 323 Liberty Road, which is Lewis Gunner, uh safe room, is open right now. I'm not aware if anybody's in there at this time. We usually have people that every single storm that hits. Um, it's, it's a pretty functional and active shelter when they type of storm, whether it's rain or, or the cold weather here. People used to take shelter there and bunker. All right, Sheriff Adams, uh, Travis uh, Travis Patton, we thank you for, for joining us. Keep us up to date. I'm sure we'll be checking in with you throughout the evening uh, as uh, uh, more information comes through. Uh, let's take a quick look at our power outages across Mississippi right now, where more than 18,000 homes are currently without power. PowerOutage.USA says that there are currently more than 1,000 outages in each of Claiborne, Adams, Wilkinson, Capaya, and Lincoln counties right now. And of course, Energy is reporting a bunch of power outages throughout. Let's go back out to Jacob Lanier with more on uh, what is happening with those uh, tornadoes that are on the ground right now. Jacob.
Yeah, thanks, Byron. So again, we just had a confirmed tornado in Hines County, so that's really what we're tracking right now. This is this tornado warning until 430 for northern Hines and western and central Madison. So the tornado would be approaching the Brownsville area, and you need to seek shelter in Flora, Livingston, Glugstad, and Canton because that is down the line. So we need to come in here and look at our velocity mode. There would be the tornado right here near between Phoenix and Nevada. So it really actually looks like this is riding the Big Black River. Um, which we have seen before. Somehow storms like to get sucked into the back Big Black River Valley. So this might actually pass a little bit north of Florida. It's kind of veering north out of the polygon. And with this line of uh, dangerous winds, these embedded circulations are really going to move up and down the line. So it's going to be hard to track. And it looks like here in the last couple of minutes that we have lost the debris signature. So that's good news. But we did have a confirmed tornado. This was uh, their 345. 348, we had debris still in Hines County. 350, we had debris. And now I don't see any debris. So that's good news. Maybe it touched down near Youngton. The Big Black River was on the ground through Cox Ferry and then lifted. But again, it could touch down at any moment again because we still have pretty tight rotation there near Nevada. So not sure if this is still on the ground, but if it is, it looks like it has changed course just a little bit to track up the Big Black River. So that would put this circulation, which is right now near Nevada, it pushes it to near Bentonia and Vernon here in the next... Uh, half hour or so. So I want to track that up the Big Black River and see our ETA. So Nevada right now, Gibbs School at 404, Bentonia and Bentonia High School at 406. And there we go. Um, I think that is uh, the new tornado warning uh, for this downstream. Uh, that also goes into Holmes County as well. We just have really several circulations as Ken and I have been tracking uh, all afternoon from I-20 into the Delta. A circulation in Humphreys County, two or three circulations in Yazoo County, and a circulation there along the Big Black River in Hines County. So again, we have kind of a wall, if you will, of tornado warnings. You need to be in your safe place if you are in northern Hines County, west or central Madison County, Yazoo County, Humphreys County, and Holmes County. From Durant, Goodman, Lexington, Chula, Belzona, all the way through uh, Yazoo City, Benton, Bentonia, Canton, Flora, Brownsville, in tornado warnings, you need to be in your tornado safe place. We need to play it safely because these circulations spin up so quickly, you need to be in your safe place uh, really before they arrive at your location. Still several locations here where we have rotation. Again, a possible tornado near Nevada, uh, Nevada which is heading towards Vernon and Flora. Um, and then also a circulation up here near Tinsley, which is in Yazoo County and right now about to cross Highway 49. Uh, it looks like more circulations up towards Silver City and Belzona as well. I just want to get a quick update on when these might arrive in the Jackson Metro. Um, these storms, I think, are still moving at about 50 miles per hour. Is that about right, Ken? 50 miles per hour-ish? Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, the one farthest to the north. 50 miles per hour, and the one in Yazoo County moving into Holmes is 45. Okay, yeah. So, again, about 45 to 50 miles per hour is this <laughs> severe line of winds in Hines County. And so, an ETA here for the Jackson Metro, again, this is moving into a more populated area now as we near 4 o'clock. Uh, Brownsville, 4 o'clock. Raymond, 410. Clinton, 415. Annandale, 418. Downtown Jackson at 427. Again, that is for this line of damaging 60 mile per hour winds. Um, and actually, if we can take our downtown tower camera, I see it shaking over there in the corner of our studio. If we can just look at that uh, and bring it up, we're looking due west into this line of storms. You can almost see the shelf cloud there along the center of your screen. It's far off. But that is the dark cloud we're looking into is this line of severe thunderstorms uh, that's going to be here in the metro in about 30 minutes. So, again, get where you're going because by 415, 420, you want to be in a spot and to stay there for an hour as this severe line of winds moves through. So, again, that severe thunderstorm warning for Hines County uh, continues here until, I think, 4 o'clock. So we will likely see that extended uh, as we come back here to Live MX 12. This severe thunderstorm warning goes until 4, will likely be extended into downtown Jackson here pretty shortly with that line of damaging winds. Good news is no rotation along this line that I'm seeing, really. Our spin ups are in Madison and Yazoo counties. Um, and it looks like, Ken, that there might be, you know, a strengthening circulation there in Yazoo County as well, um, if you want to take a look at that. 
I was just uh, plugging in the forward motion on that storm. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 45 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, all of the warnings that we have right now. Of course, we're most concerned with these uh, tornado warnings, but even the severe thunderstorm warnings uh, can produce damage because uh, we're going to see wind gusts here 60, 70 miles per hour, or maybe even more as this blows through. But two tornado warnings right here, this one for Humphreys County and this one for Parts of Yazoo County both are set to expire in two minutes at the top of the hour at uh, 4 p.m. But we've already had an extension of this Yazoo County warning into the rest of Yazoo County and into Holmes County. That's going to go for another hour until 5 o'clock. And that's because just to the south of Yazoo City there, we're seeing what is uh, looks like a, a pretty pronounced uh, rotation. Um, it doesn't look as good. The storm that passed uh, through Louise at had some very gusty winds with that, not seeing as much rotation there. So I do think that they're likely going to let that tornado warning go at the top of the hour. We're going to know here in about a minute or so when that one uh, hopefully pops off and they don't uh, issue another warning farther downstream. But for right now, there are really two big areas of interest. Uh, Jacob is going to continue to tackle the one moving from Northern Hines into Madison County. But I'm going to take a look at this cell that's moving into Yazoo County. So let's are moving through. Yazoo Yazoo County. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, that uh, part of the line. And there you see right there, right around Tinsley, you see how we have got the radar kind of jutting out right there that tells us that we've got really strong winds uh, pushing out that rain around the Tinsley area. And then there's a notch a little bit farther off to the north. Again, this is south of Yazoo City. So we would suspect that this is the point of the line where we have rotation. But to confirm it, we're going to look inside the storm and we're going to see if we can see the wind speed and the wind direction. And yeah, this basically confirms it uh, right there. This is where we've got winds moving in opposite directions. There you see a positive or excuse me, 59 miles per hour. Yeah, positive 59. That are Those are outbound winds away from the radar site. And then just on the other side there, we've got a negative 36. Those are inbound winds toward the radar site. Add those together, 60 and about 40. And you get between 90 and 100 mile per hour winds that are circulating there. We know at least at cloud level, we don't know what's happening on the ground, but uh, this is the type of circulation that could put down a tornado. So we want you to be careful and get into your safe spot if you live near this area or especially downstream out ahead of it. And remember, it's moving to the northeast at about uh, 45 miles per hour. So let's clear this up and we'll just take a look at the velocity here. And we're going to circle where the rotation is now crossing Highway 49 east of Tinsley in Yazoo County, right there. And we know how fast it's moving. So let's go ahead and track it off in that direction for about the next 30 minutes through the rest of Yazoo County. And these are the places, let's go ahead and do it again. <clears throat> these are the places that are gonna be in the path of the storm over about the next 30 minutes plus. And we are looking at uh, Benton at 413, Evans at 420, Decentville at 424, Vaughn at 429, and Oaks at about 433. If you live in these communities, if you live near these communities, you need to take shelter right now because your time is running short as this storm is moving quickly in your direction. If it's moving at 45 miles per hour, it's not going to take too long uh, to get to your area if you live in central or eastern Yazoo County. Uh, make the most of the time that you have now and get into that hopefully predetermined safe spot. That would most uh, likely be a basement or a storm shelter. Those are the best places that you could be. But in lieu of that, you need to get to a sturdy structure, to a small interior room on the lowest floor and staying away from windows. Uh, again, these storms have a history of producing damage producing tornadoes and that could be happening once again right now in the central part of Yazoo County and then moving east at about 45 miles per hour. So we'll take this off once again. We're going to zoom into the rotating part of the storm. We're going to get a closer look in. It should be rotating right there. 
south of Yazoo City, right along Highway 49. And as we get a closer look in, there you see some smaller communities that are popping in and some of these streets as well. So we're going to query some of these areas that are going to be in the path of the storm here in just the next few minutes. Kirk Road, Paradise Road, Merleville Road, Nod Road, and Highway 4. 33. It's going to be there again in just a few minutes. We're looking at uh, at crossing Merleville Road in about, let's say, less than five minutes, and then crossing Highway 433 in Yazoo County in less than eight minutes. There you see the radar is updating, so that gives us an update view of what's happening right here. And let's zoom in once again. Dark Corner Road, Merleville Road, Cox Road, Scotland Road, Highway 433, all are going to be affected by the rotating part of the squall line uh, within the next couple of minutes, certainly within less than 10 minutes. Merleville Road, it's going to cross there in about two minutes, and Highway 433 in about five minutes' time. So get in that safe spot, stay there until we can sound the all clear. By the way, if you live farther to the west here, and let's just turn on the radar, and I want to show you where this uh, squall line is. If you live to the west of Highway 3 in Yazoo County, if you live in Sharkey or Issaquina County, it's still going to be raining. You still may get an occasional wind gust, but the worst is now past you. The worst of it is going to be along the leading edge of the squall line, which is moving eastward now through the metro into Madison County, eastern Yazoo County, and soon is going to be approaching Holmes County as well. We're most interested in this part of the line that has a good signature of rotation. And remember, we've got a tornado warning here for Yazoo and Holmes counties uh, uh, for almost the next hour, uh, for the next 55 minutes until 5 o'clock. Um, so if you live in Goodman, already hit by a tornado just a little over a week ago, you could be in the path of this potential tornado as well. Certainly, you're going to get heavy rain, dangerous lightning, and some squally weather with very strong winds over the next 30 minutes to an hour. But uh, another tornado is not out of the question. So north of Vaughn, around Pickens, Goodman, any of these places in Yazoo, Holmes, northern Madison counties, you need to get into your safe spot and stay there. All right, for more about the cell, which is moving from northern high, into Madison counties. Uh, let's send it back over to Jacob. Okay, thanks, Ken. Uh, so, again, we are still tracking those tornado warnings and also, again, a new severe thunderstorm warning for the Jackson Metro. Um, and we are tracking a strong line of winds about to move through the city. So I want to update here uh, this ETA track for us. Um, and this puts, again, 60-mile per hour winds moving through Hines County. Uh, they're going to be in Raymond here at 419, Clinton 424, downtown Jackson at 440, towards Richland at 447. And winds out ahead of this line are still significant. 50 mile per hour gusts at Jackson Evers International and at Hawkins Field in downtown Jackson. That has caused damage, and I think it has caused damage across the metro. Um, I think we have Anthony and Ridgeland. Uh, uh, who also has some damage. So, Walt, if you want to take us to there. Uh, yeah, thank you. Hey, let's have, is it actually, the Rankin County, you, you know, y'all are talking about the line of storms where the uh, tornadoes are, which is back to the west of us. But we've had these strong winds all day long out in front of this uh, line coming through. Now, Anthony Howard is in uh, Rankin County right now. Anthony, you got a tree down and some people are in the dark over there. Tell us what's going on. Hey, well, actually, I'm in Madison County. Madison we started County. our okay. time off in Canton. Businesses down for today, preparing for the severe weather, and some of the stoplights in the functioning, and police officers were on standby to kind of monitor, you know, uh, monitor traffic to make sure people. Well, I think we're having a little bit of trouble keeping up with uh, Anthony right there. And that happens sometimes. You know, you got this bad weather out there, and it interferes with the signal that we're trying to get back to the, to the TV station. We had the Adams County EMS director on the phone a while ago. Is he still with us? 
uh, or let's let's go back to Jacob and then we'll I think let's do that because this is also a long line of storms yeah. it's not just severe where the tornado warnings are but we want to check on Adams County but we'll check and see if we can get our EMS director back on the phone but Jacob yeah and we still have those severe thunderstorm warnings here in southwest Mississippi so again damaging winds again a wall of damaging winds moving into Meadville Crystal Springs as well again though I uh, want to come back here to these tornado warnings this is where we have kind of the highest threat right now in Yazoo and Madison counties uh, the National Weather Service saying that uh, near Benton there's likely a tornado uh, because the circulation is so tight so again I'm going to show you where that is right here and this is almost Yazoo City I mean that's Highway 14 between Yazoo and Benton the storm is moving towards Benton the National Weather Service says this rotation is tight enough uh, that it is likely a tornado no confirmed debris uh, but certainly tight rotation here near the Benton area so I'm just going to query these winds for us and see how strong this rotation is I mean yeah that's a hundred and fifteen mile per hour rotation right here near Benton so Yazoo City they're behind me Yazoo Junction this is highway 14 and 16 heading into Benton that's where there's rotation possible tornado on Mullet Road uh, Nevins Road as well Redmond Road again this is Benton Benton seek shelter right now um, and it looks like um, a storm chaser is telling us uh, that just south of Yazoo City as this storm crossed Highway 49 there's possible tornado damage so that to me signifies that we likely have a tornado on the ground or was on the ground here in Yazoo County so again Yazoo County Benton Pierce Cross Road Ford Key Evans seek shelter now we likely have a tornado right here on Highway 14 moving northeast uh, and that is moving pretty quickly at about 50 miles per hour I want to track this real quick for us that's going to move north of Benton up towards Pierce Crossroad 416, Fordyke 423, Ebenezer, which is into Holmes County at 428. And again, this is why uh, we have the tornado warning downstream into Holmes County. So here's that wider view showing you southern Holmes County is in this tornado warning. This tornado is right near Benton. It's tracking north up towards, say, the Ebenezer area. Uh, that would be also approaching Goodman as well. I hope it uh, does not go towards Goodman. Of course, they were just hit by a tornado last week. Uh, but yeah, possible circulation near Benton, tornado likely on the ground. It has produced damage in Yazoo County. So Evans, Fordyke, Ebenezer, Pickens, Goodman, seek shelter, please. We have another tornado here possible. Uh, so again, the circulation is at Benton. This is going to cross Highway 14. Uh, there between Pierce Crossroads and Fordyke and as we look at our circulation there it is right on the north side of Benton so again the tornado is near H and H Club Road, Nivens Road, Chew Forks Road, Pierce Crossroads there's Highway 14 it's an observed tornado. okay so now we have observed tornado uh, yeah so because we have debris on radar and an, a spotter is telling us that it has crossed as well. So, Ken, I think you have some of that debris yeah, on radar. Right back to you okay. because you've got a good uh, peg on it. But I was just looking at uh, the debris tracker uh, to see if we could pick up something with this particular tornado. And I'm just looking at National Weather Service chat, and they're saying there was some damage just east of Highway 49 south of Yazoo City. Well, let's take a look right here. And you see that right there? Uh, we'll back it up in time at about, let's see, this was about four minutes after uh, four o'clock. I'm going to try to circle this, what I think is uh, the debris that was produced when the tornado touched down. There it is, right there. I'm trying to get my telestrator to work, but again, it's right about there. So here's Highway 49, east of Highway 49, south of Yazoo City at four minutes after four o'clock. There's an indication that there was debris, debris produced. Now we're getting reports of that and we're seeing that very tight rotation now passing near the Benton area, likely just to the east of Benton, and it is now considered an observed tornado on the ground. Also, I want to, now that I'm on the debris tracker here, and I'm going to push this back in time a little bit more, and I want to point out a couple areas here. This is the tornado that uh, we were tracking in northern 
Hines County moving into Madison County and also right there in Yazoo County. I believe that's debris there and that's debris there. So I'm thinking we're going to get several tornado tracks when all is said and done, certainly in northern Hines County and maybe a couple of tracks here through Yazoo County as well. Now I want to send it back uh, to Jacob. He's got the latest on that storm in Yazoo County. Okay, yeah, thanks, Ken. So again, I mean, as you said, this line of uh, storms, this is kind of what we were forecasting, you know, for today is this line of damaging winds, several embedded tornadoes. We've already had, I think, at least three confirmed, one in Eagle Lake, one uh, in Hines County there near the Youngton area, and one now near Yazoo City in Benton. So Warren, Hines, and Yazoo counties have now had likely confirmed tornadoes, and there's the rotation near Benton. Also, just looking at reflectivity, I've noticed a notch here along the Big Black River near Bentonia and Vernon. Of course, just, I mean, everyone in Yazoo knows this, but Bentonia down here near the Big Black River, Benton up on Highway 14. Uh, so both spots, I've noticed this notch along the Big Black River north of Livingston, kind of near the Kearney Park area. And when I come over to Velocity, we see a little bit of rotation there as well. So we could see a spin up near Kearney Park, north of Stokes, north of Livington here uh, any moment. So just keep an eye on that on the Big Black River. A tornado warning again continues for Madison County. Uh, as well, so you need to be in your safe place. Let's go back up to that likely confirmed tornado here. It is now about to cross Highway 14 near Pierce Cross Road, um, near the Ziegler,ville Evans, Fordyke area, just passed through Benton. So again, I'll just circle this for us here. Again, there's Highway 14, so no one needs to be driving on Highway 14. And there's the county line. We have Yazoo County and Holmes County up there. So Ziegler,ville Ebenezer, Highway 14 uh, into Holmes County. Seek shelter now. Uh, that's not far from the Pickens, the Durant, uh, the Goodman area. Uh, but right now the circulation is due north of Benton, uh, moving to the north at about 50 miles per hour. So let's actually put a forecast track on this storm so we can give you a heads up as it moves downstream. And because it's a circulation embedded in a line, it might move up and down the line a little bit. So I'm just going to do a little bit more elongated track for this uh, to see exactly when it could impact some spots. Just want to make sure that everyone is covered and everyone really should be in their safe place right now. So again, this is Evans 420. That's five minutes. Fordyke 425. Uh, Chestnut Ridge School at 431. That's Ebenezer as well at 431. Franklin 441. Goodman at 450. Of course, we had a tornado hit Goodman last week. Um, so that's not good. Uh, we still have severe thunderstorm warnings that extend down the line. Um, and I don't know if we've had any damage down towards the south, but Walt Grayson uh, has, uh, I think, Adams County email on the phone. And Walt, maybe we can find out if there was any damage down near Natchez? Sure, let's uh, find out right now. Joining me on the phone is Adams County EMA Director Robert Branford. Uh, Robert, tell us what's been going on down in uh, Adams County. How are you doing, Walt? Well, uh, well. We started receiving damage around right after, maybe bit after one o'clock. Uh, we start getting calls of trees and wires down. Uh, also, some poles, power poles snapping. And right now, I think we may have uh, close to 1,200 uh, customers without power in our area. Uh, so right now, our road department and our Adams County Sheriff's Office are still out surveying uh, the county roads. Uh, so hopefully, we should. Um, be able to get those roads cleared within the next hour or two. Uh, also, we have uh, 55 uh, residents in our safe room uh, that have seek shelter from the storm. Uh, but right now, we haven't reported any structural damage as of now. Robert, is this out in the county, or is this in the uh, city of Natchez, or a little of both? Right, it's a little of both. Uh, Energy and Southwest, I think, you know, they do have a uh, significant amount of people without power, a couple of businesses. Uh, so. You know, the great thing is, you know, there's no uh, big structure damage or anything if trees fall on buildings. A couple of near misses, but, uh, you know, yeah. we, we, we survived. Now, how about right now? Are you still in the, th uh, the throes of the storms? Do they look like they're beginning to pass over? What's the situation at the moment? Right. They're, they're beginning to dwindle down. Uh, we're still receiving a uh, little rain here and there. Uh, but it's, it's clearing up enough for our road crews to be safe enough uh, to be out on the roads. Oh, good. Robert Ranford, uh, EMA Director of Adams County. Y'all stay safe down there, buddy. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ken South, we've got uh, a lot of stuff going on around here. We've got uh, tornado warnings in our area right now. Can you catch us up on that? Yeah, we sure do.
We've got a uh, tornado warning for the metro until 4.30 for about the next, uh, let's say, 13 minutes or so. A little bit farther to the north for parts of eastern Yazoo and southern Holmes County until the top of the hour until 5 o'clock. But anywhere along this line, we could see damaging winds and possibly rotating winds. And we have noticed an area just north of that northern tornado warning right around Chula where the winds are really, really strong right now. And we may be in the process of seeing a rotation form a little bit farther north along the line in parts of Holmes County, more specifically the Chula area. Take a look at that. Doesn't matter if it's a tornado or not. When you get 88 mile per hour winds, that likely is going to produce some type of damage. Now, again, this is cloud level. We don't know what's happening at the ground, but if those type of winds were able to reach the ground, obviously we'd be talking about uh, those producing damage. And we had the potential uh, before the day started of getting even straight line winds at up to about 80 miles per hour or more. So we could be seeing that right now moving through Holmes County from Chula back over to Wyatt and Kruger and then moving eastward towards Highway 433, Lexington and Highway 17. But of course, this area under a severe thunderstorm warning farther south is where we have our tornado warning. So let's go ahead and take a look at Live IMAX 2 full screen so we can get the latest now on those tornado warnings. So we're going to scan this line a little bit farther to the south and want to look at this area to the east of Benton. Uh, that's the area that we've been watching. So I'm going to go back in time a little bit. So this is where the rotation was more pronounced. This is where we had a weather spotter observe this tornado. So that's why it was a confirmed observed tornado on the ground. At this point, going farther in time, it doesn't look to be as pronounced, but it does look like that there's some really strong winds there near Ziegler-Ville. So let's go ahead and query those winds. Um, right there, we've got winds 92 miles per hour moving in one direction, about 13 miles per hour in the other direction. Uh, so that's what's left, I believe of that um, storm that moved through the Benton area, or at least uh, squally weather right along the leading edge of that uh, severe line of storms, now moving through north and east Yazoo County and the southern parts of Holmes County. So take shelter. It doesn't matter if it's an actual tornado or not. Uh, those type of winds are going to be able to produce damage, and you need to protect yourself uh, from those potentially damaging winds now moving through Yazoo and Holmes County. So let's say a little bit farther to the south to see if we can pick up any rotation here. Uh, again, I'm going to go back in time to see if we can pick up anything. And I'm just noticing just a, a few kinks in the line right there near Flora and then also right around the uh, Big Black River on the county line of Madison and Yazoo counties. That would be now east of Highway 49 and Highway 433. Let's go ahead and track this one out. Um, at about 50 miles per hour. These storms are moving at about 45, 50 miles per hour. So if there's rotation right there, right around the Big Black River, Yazoo, Madison counties, we're tracking it out to the east at about um, for the next 30 minutes or so. And these communities are going to be in the path of this particular storm. We're looking at Way, Sharpsburg, and Loring past the bottom of the hour. So I'm going to clear this up. We're going to zoom out just a little bit and we're going to put on our tornado warnings. And yeah, okay, so there are two of them. Let's just go ahead and query both of these to get the very latest information, the one farther to the south. Again, we've got a tornado warning for about the next nine minutes for this one, mostly now in uh, Madison County. And then a little bit farther to the north, Yazoo and Holmes County. We've got this tornado warning until five o'clock. And I think the most uh, pronounced rotation right now that we're looking at is the one uh, farther to the north moving from Yazoo into Holmes County. So let's uh, concentrate on that one uh, for the moment. And again, we're looking at this area near Ziegler-Ville, north and east of Benton. So if you live anywhere downstream of this storm uh, along Interstate 55, along Highway 51, we're looking at areas now mostly in Holmes County for the rest of the four o'clock hour. You need to seek shelter and stay in that shelter until we tell you that the storm is 
past you. Let's go ahead and uh, we're just going to track out this entire line right there farther off to the north and east over about the next 30 minutes. And this is going to give you a pretty good indication of when the squall line is going to move through your area with those potentially damaging winds. Fort Ike at 422, Ebenezer 425, Lexington at the bottom of the hour, Owen Wells 435, Goodman once again at 438. Now, I know you're storm weary in the Goodman area because of what happened last week. And by the way, there were more than two dozen confirmed tornadoes from that Tuesday, March 22nd. Uh, outbreak in Mississippi and honestly they haven't even really uh, finished those surveys just quite yet they actually had a couple more places to actually go to see if there were tornado tracks but again a couple of dozen tornadoes in Mississippi a little more than a week ago and I'm sure that we are going to get some uh, confirmed tornadoes out of this event as well as we have seen debris being produced in at least three four different locations uh, so far today so that's why you need to take this seriously if you live in Goodman just go ahead. You know what to do now. Get in that safe spot and stay there until the storm has passed you. And that will happen, I think, as we get close to the bottom of this next hour. Uh, again, Goodman, it should be there at about 438. Stay in that safe spot at least until about a quarter till uh, the 5 o'clock hour. Um, all right, so we've got uh, the Madison County Sheriff is on the line right now. Of course, Madison County is one of those places that still is under a tornado warning because of the squall line moving through for at least the next six and a half minutes. So Walt, we'll send it over to you. Hey, thank you, Ken. Joining me on the phone now is Madison County Sheriff Randy Tucker. Uh, there is a tornado warning for your county right now, Sheriff Tucker. What do you see? What's going on there? Randy Tucker, have you got us? Yes, I am. There you go. Okay, now we have you. Uh, what are the conditions in Madison County right now? Well, you know, we've been uh, tracking the same sales you guys have been telling us about. You know, the, uh, the sale that just moved north of Florida, uh, obviously tracking up that big black river. That seems to be a, a popular corridor for these storms. And we've had some, some minor trees down and okay. stuff of that nature, but uh, nothing okay. serious at this point. A few power lines, but... Uh, uh, right now, Madison, Central Madison is just now starting to get some of the brunt of these winds that are coming through. Uh, what do people in Madison County need to know right now? I mean, do they, they need to shelter in place? Do they need to go someplace? Uh, what's the best thing for people there to do at the moment? Well, anytime there's a, a line of storms like this, you never know where these, these, these cells are going to pop up. They could pop up at any time, so they need to have them a plan in place that they can take shelter, uh, obviously get all the pets inside. Uh, but main thing is to pay attention to what you guys are putting out there. Y'all have the information and can share directly with them and, and never take anything for granted. It's better to be safe than sorry. Yes, yes indeed. Sheriff Randy Tucker, Madison County. Uh, just like I told the folks down in Adams County, y'all stay safe out there. We'll probably contact yep. you a little while later. Ken, update okay. the information. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you, Sheriff Tucker. We appreciate the information for Madison County. Hey, we appreciate it. That warning uh, set to expire in less than five minutes. Unfortunately, we have a new tornado warning, and this is for Hines and Rankin counties. It does include the city of Jackson. So Jackson is now under a tornado warning. You should be hearing those tornado sirens right now. If you can hear the sirens, if you can hear us tell you that you're in the path of the storm, you need to take shelter right now. So this red polygon, that is our new tornado warning. Let's go ahead and query this. I want to get the specifics. Uh, this cell, this rotating part of the cell, which is right there south of Raymond, is going to be moving off to the north, excuse me, moving directly to the east at about 45 miles per hour. It is a radar indicated rotation, again, moving east at 45 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and track this off to the edge of the polygon right here. And here you see when this potential tornado is going to be moving through specific areas. Um, Byram in about, let's say, 10 to 15 minutes. Right now it's 426. Byram is going to be affected by this potential tornado at about 440. The southern part of the city of Jackson at about 448 and then crossing the Pearl River into Rankin County. So closer to the top of the hour, Flowood at 456, Brandon at about five o'clock, 
Pelahatchee at about 515, and then Cooperville at about 522. So populated areas being affected by the squall line. We have got rotation once again indicated within the squall line, and this part of the line is going to be moving right across the city of Jackson here in the next several minutes. Right now it's about 427. We're looking at that being around Jackson at 448. So you've got, I would say, less than 20 minutes to seek your shelter, get into your safe spot and stay there until this storm is done. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom in. And we are going to look at the velocity here. Let's yeah, so so Raymond, or, or we're looking at Raymond and also Palestine, right? Okay, so, all right, let's take a look at the velocity, and we're going to zoom in, and just as Jacob was telling us here, we've got what looks to be the rotating part of this line right there, but there's another rotation which is right there near the Raymond area. So uh, we've got two areas that we're going to be watching approaching the southern part of the city of Jackson. So downtown Jackson points south. You could be affected by the storm over the next several minutes. Let's uh, go ahead and track this out to the east. Remember, moving directly to the east at about 45 miles per hour. So crossing Interstate 55 in about 10 minutes. It's only going to take about eight miles for this rotating part of the storm, the squall line, to get to where it's going. But then uh, along Highway 18 near Raymond, we've got another rotation there. If it's moving east, maybe a little bit north of east, uh, we're looking at this being uh, in southwest Jackson, uh, near WJTV actually, in about, let's say, 10 to 15 minutes. So the weather is going to go downhill very quickly if you live in Jackson along Interstate 55 towards Elton and Byram and then crossing the Pearl River, crossing Highway 49 near Richland going over to Florence. And then this is going to be moving along Interstate 20 uh, towards Flowood and Pearl and Brandon. So let's uh, clear this up a little bit. I want to put back on the radar. Let's just look at the radar. Uh, this is the reflectivity, and this is what we have been talking about all afternoon long. The squall line is dangerous, but then when you see something like this, you see parts of this line jutting out like that, and then there's a notch on the other side. That's a potential rotation. And then look near Raymond, it happens again. It juts out there, and then you see a notch there, and then even a little bit farther to the north, uh, closer to the Clinton area, you can see another one. So at least two, maybe three parts of this line as it's moving to the east at about 45 miles per hour could be rotating and could put down a tornado at a moment's notice. So you need to take shelter right now. This entire line, uh, it looks like it's rotating at several different locations and it's all moving towards us. So just get in that safe spot. Any one or more of these could put down a tornado and start producing damage, especially when you're talking about getting into a very populated area. We're talking about tree damage, structural damage. We've been uh, looking at the winds with these storms and they could be getting up there around 90 or 100 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and um, let's take a look. I'm going to look at our scope tool yeah, you can see it there clearly as well. I'm going to see if I can query some of these wind speeds so we can see just how strong the winds are. Near Palestine, it looks like the strongest winds are down there. That's a negative 28 on the other side. We got a positive 14. So that's what, about 50 mile per hour winds right there. So negative 18 right there, positive 22. That's about 40 miles per hour, then a little bit farther up the line. Negative 10, positive 17. Not as strong uh, closer to the Natchez Trace and the Clinton area, but I would really be watching these two areas right here east of Raymond and now east of Palestine moving to the east at about 45 miles per hour. So let's get a much closer look in. Very easy to tell where we've got these potential rotations. So we're going to push them back over to the left portion of the screen. I'm going to circle both of these. The one east of Palestine is moving towards Spring Ridge. The one east of Raymond along Highway 18 is moving towards Sidewell. And there you see that WJTV 12 
popping up there. So this is going to be moving right up along Highway 18 and getting really close to our studios here in the next several minutes. So we're going to be watching it closely and we may have to get uh, the people on the TV station to actually take shelter here in the next uh, few minutes. We're in a very sturdy structure here at WJTV, but we want everybody to be safe here. Uh, the storm is going to be in southwestern Jackson within, I would say, five to seven minutes. Then we have also got this one on the southern part of the line. It's going to be near Byram crossing Highway 55 or Interstate 55 and Highway 51 uh, shortly after that. Again, six miles away in about five to seven minutes. Jacob, tell me uh, what you're seeing with this yeah. line of storms. Well, and Ken, well, I'll get back to the Hines County storm in literally 30 seconds. I okay. just have to let everyone know in Lexington, seek shelter now. Lexington, Durant, this is Holmes County, a likely tornado hitting Lexington right now. Just want to let everyone in Holmes County know a tornado warning continues and you need to be in your safe place right now. That tornado warning has been extended downstream into Durant and West. So Holmes County, tornado near Lexington, seek shelter now. We also have likely or possibly two tornadoes in Hines County. And I want to get back to those real quick and show you where that is here on Live IMAX 12 radar. Really, I mean, we're on velocity mode, and this is honestly classic signature of two twin spin up tornadoes. So one of them is on Highway 18 moving in towards Cywell and the WJTV studios. So we might need to seek shelter here. We also have a likely tornado near Spring Ridge moving towards uh, Byram, between Byram and Elton. So again, possibly we could have twin spin-up tornadoes at any moment here in Hines County. This tornado warning goes until 515, if, if I remember that correctly, this for uh, Hines and Rankin County. So again, there's possible two circulations here, one over Spring Ridge. Everyone in Byram, Seibel Road, you need to be in your safe place right now. That's from the Kroger and Sywell down to the Byron Walmart. Seek shelter right now. We could have a tornado near Spring Ridge about to cross Sywell Road and I-55. Another possible tornado right now on Highway 18 moving up into Southwest Jackson, WJTV, and Metro Center areas. I want to take now a live look from our Jackson Tower camera. And again, we have this pointed to the due south and west. So we are looking right into uh, these uh, possible tornadoes. The National Weather Service saying that they're monitoring two tornadoes in Hines County, one near Byram, one on Highway 18 coming into the Forest Hill community. Hines County tornado shelter right now. Now we are looking downstream here. This is from downtown Jackson. We are looking out Highway 18. There could be a tornado anywhere in here, and I'm trying to see. Kennerwald, if you see anything, let me know. It's hard to see. Yep. So it's going to be hard to see. We have seen some lights flashing on and off. We don't know if that's okay. actually damage being produced or some yeah. kind of tower. And, and I just want to get area. back to the radar here again. The National Weather Service saying that there could be two tornadoes right now in Hines County. Again, tornado warning for Hines County until 530. One in southwest Jackson near WJTV, Cywell and Forest Hill. That's this notch in the line. Another one in Spring Ridge and Cywell Road near Byram. So two possible twin tornadoes as we go back to velocity. Um, certainly, I mean, this is going to come right over WJTV, really. In the newsroom to get into their safe spot right now because I do think this is yeah. uh, going to be close enough to our studios here at WJTV that we're going to get some very strong winds out of this and uh, we need our folks here at the station to be safe as well. Yeah, 50 mile per hour rotation right now over Forest Hill and Highway 18. So again, uh, right now here, if you live near Metro Center, Forest Hill, or say the Greenway uh, Walmart, you need to be in your safe place right now. There's McDowell Road, Highway 18. Southwest Jackson seek shelter, uh, and there's a, the tornado would likely be crossing Silo Road as well. So again, possibly two tornadoes in Hines County, and I want to come back here just to our camera, and it's hard to see. You can almost there's a rain shaft. The clouds are certainly lower right there over Highway 18, Forest Hill, WJTV as well. Um, what was that again? Okay, we can. Yeah, let's take it. Well, let's see what we're looking at here. These are live pictures as well. So this is near the 220 Merritt Health I-20 intersection. Um, the tornado would be there shortly. Let's come back here to the tower camera again. 
because uh, I think that we have a good shot here uh, looking into the possible tornadoes from downtown. If there's a tornado, it's going to be, I think, right there, Ken. Yeah, I think uh, you're right. Right there over Highway 18, and I think that's our tower. That's our WJTV tower that's flashing out there or close to it out there as we look towards the south and east. So again, a tornado warning for Hines County. Again, everyone should be in their safe place right now. Winds picking up downtown. Ken, do you want to give us a radar update? Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at Live IMAX 2. Once again, two areas of rotation, two potential tornadoes here. We're looking at one, um, a rider in Spring Ridge moving into South Sidewall Road, uh, approaching Interstate 55, moving close to the Byram area, and then another one um, along Highway 18, just to the north of Forest Hill. This is moving towards WJTV and Van Winkle, and it's also going to be moving, I think, on the west side of downtown Jackson. So we're looking at uh, Robinson Road, that area. Yeah, you can e and you can hear the winds Gosh. picking up here at uh, the television station. So there's actually a little hole right there too, uh, Jacob. Uh, take a look at that on radar. Wow! And that would tell me that we have got likely a tornado right there, moving along and just to the north of Highway 18. Whew. Okay, so wow. um, we're going to be quiet for just. A, I don't know if you can hear that over the air here, but the winds have really picked up outside our studios at WJTV. We're in the studio here. Uh, it's often amplified in the studio when we get rain and wind, but this is something that we don't hear a whole lot. The wind is swirling outside, really picking up right now at uh, our studios in Southwest Jackson at WJTV. Uh, just to give you some perspective, WJTV is uh, just off Highway 18 on the east side of Highway 18 and south of the Metro Center. A lot of folks know exactly where the Metro Center is. We're maybe a mile south of the Metro Center. And take a look at this on radar right there. We got a hole right there. That's where we have likely got um, a tornado. We don't know if it's on the ground, uh, but if you live anywhere in this area uh, along Highway 18, South Jackson, or anywhere to the east of there, you need to take shelter right now. We need to treat this as if this is a tornado on the ground moving through the south side of the city of Jackson. Remember, it is moving to the east at about 45, 50 miles per hour. So it's about a mile away now from WJTV. It's about uh, three miles away from the Highway 220, Interstate 20 interchange. It's about three miles, four minutes away from Highway 80. So um, a lot of you are familiar with these areas. Um, this is where we've got a tornado. And then a little bit farther to the south, we don't want to lose sight that there could be another tornado uh, near South Sidewall Road moving towards Elton on the south side of the city of Jackson. That one is going to be crossing Terry Road here in just the next few minutes. So at least one possibly two tornadoes right now in Hines County moving through the south side of the city of Jackson. Take shelter right now. You don't have any more time to waste. If you um, are in this area or if you are east of there, this is going to be moving towards you. If you live, uh, let's say, downtown Jackson in Rankin County, east of Jackson, especially Highway 49, Florence to Richland, over to Whitfield, Flowood, Pearl, and Brandon. It's all quickly going to be moving toward your area. Could be crossing the airport here in just the next several minutes as well. So there's where we've got the rotation. It is about 10 miles or 13 minutes away from crossing Highway 475, which is where the Jackson Airport is. Uh, Flowood, about 9 to 10 miles away, so about 10 minutes away from moving across that area. And then of course, downtown Jackson as well. Uh, could be affected by the storm. Let's go ahead and take a closer look in. There's uh, WJTV right there in South Jackson, and we're still looking at what we're still looking at what appears to be a notch on the radar right there. Let's see if we can telestrate it. So winds moving in this direction on the south side of WJTV in the Van Winkle area. It's going to be moving in this direction. So rotating winds right there now along Interstate 20 
and Interstate 220. And of course, that's moving to the east at about 45 miles per hour. Um, we're getting a lot of heavy rain now at WJTV. I don't hear the winds that are swirling as much out there. So I'm thinking it may be passing just to the east of us uh, by now. But if you live east of, let's say, Highway 18 in South Jackson, what we can tell you firsthand, what you were going to experience are extremely strong, potentially damaging winds. And there could be a tornado on the ground moving through this area. We don't have any kind of confirmation uh, from anybody just yet, but uh, we don't want to wait for confirmation in this case. We want. OK, National Weather Service is saying APT and us. that it is on the ground. Uh, Jacob, if you got more yeah. information, do you want to take over here? OK, yeah. So again, so again, the National Weather Service now has this as a confirmed tornado heading right into downtown Jackson. Again, I know there's uh, apartments in downtown Jackson. You need to seek an interior stairwell, lowest level possible, get away from windows and outside. The National Weather Service says that a tornado was observed by a tower camera here on Highway 18, and it crossed over another TV station here and WJTV 12. It is now nearing I-20 at Valley Street and heading into downtown Jackson. Again, this is a confirmed tornado at I-20 and 220. Uh, so we have a confirmed tornado heading into downtown Jackson. We can still hear the tornado here from our studios at WJTV. Um, and it's going to be hard to pick up with the radar so close. Uh, but there's also uh, was a confirmed funnel cloud south near Elton. But it looks like the dominant circulation here is the one that's heading into downtown Jackson. And really, Ken, it almost looks like another circulation near the zoo heading into Fondren. So we still have two twin possible tornadoes in Hines County, one confirmed right now approaching Highway 80 and State Street. Downtown Jackson, if you live inside the perimeter, you need to seek shelter immediately. Tornado safe place in Jackson at the hospitals. Please seek your shelter. Fondren, Bellhaven, Manship, West Capitol Street, out towards the zoo. We have one, if not two, tornadoes. This southern one is confirmed. That is what just hit WJTV. Our newsroom was sheltered. I think it is now safe for the WJTV newsroom to come out of the shelter. It has passed over the station. We now have these two storms heading towards downtown Jackson and Fondren. So you need to be in your safe place right now. We can see the tornadoes here on radar. We can see this donut hole right over the zoo. That's where this northern circulation is. Again, West Capitol Street, and this is heading right towards Mill Street and then UMMC Bellhaven Fondren. Again, a likely tornado right over the Jackson Zoo. That's the north one. And then to the south, we have this tornado that was confirmed and is likely nearing JSU in downtown Jackson. Let me get now to our live tower camera downtown. So we're looking here. There's JSU. Right over there, this is Jackson State University, and this is the rain that is wrapping the tornado in downtown Jackson. Notice our cameras wobbling, uh, and I just want to stay on this shot for a minute because we could see the tornado come through. We could also see this tower camera maybe go down if the winds are strong enough. Uh, so again, this is the likely tornado. It was confirmed five minutes ago, and it's moving right now into downtown Jackson. The camera is really wobbling miles per hour. Okay. So tracking this out, it should be there within one to two minutes. So okay. yeah, we should probably just stay on the shot uh, for the next couple of minutes. Yeah. Uh, again, right. We're, we're actually watching three areas uh, right now. The Jackson Zoo, there's a little um, what we would call a donut hole right there. The one that we tracked over WJTV is now moving to the east at about 45 miles per hour into downtown Jackson. And then remember, we also had uh, something confirmed, I believe, near Elton that's yep. moving across the Elton area right now, crossing Interstate 55. So one, two, three areas of rotation that we're watching. But I do want to send it back over to Jacob yep. because he's got that downtown tower camera. And if it's going to cross over there, it's going to do so within the next minute or two. Exactly, Ken. And now I actually have debris near JSU right over south downtown Jackson. So, you know, the warehouse district south of downtown near I-20. So there's the debris at 443 JSU down towards Highway 80. 
It crosses over State Street. That means, folks, it is now moving across the Pearl River into Rankin County. Pearl, please seek shelter. Wells, Flowood, McLaurin Heights, please seek shelter. Let's go back here to the tornado shot from downtown. And the tornado is probably surrounding us probably just off to the left. It's, you know, we're not going to be able to see the funnel from this view, but there's the winds coming around. We know there are rotating winds downtown. It is pouring rain. It's a rain wrapped tornado. You're not going to see it. There's a power flash um, as it goes through South Jackson. I'm really amazed that this camera is still uh, holding up. It's very windy downtown, and the storm is now likely nearing I-55 and crossing into Rankin County across the Pearl River. So again, we're going to have some damage reports coming in soon, I'm sure, but the National Weather Service saying that there is still an observed tornado near um, Pearl and Flowood now. So it is in Rankin County. Uh, it is confirmed tornado near Pearl and Flowood moving east at 45 miles per hour. We're seeing the backside of this tornado. Um, and flying debris is going to be dangerous. This tornado will near Brandon at 455, Pelahatchee at 510. Now, I want to come back here to radar, and we need to track this out because this is still a confirmed tornado that just moved through downtown Jackson, and our, it is moving towards the east at 45 miles per hour. So let's put a forecast track on this, 45 miles per hour. It's near Jackson, and I'm just going to do a broad uh, forecast here. So it's net I-55 heading into Pearl. Here's our ETAs east over right now. Pearl 449, that's in 30 seconds. Pearl, tornado safe place right now. It is now crossing Flowood Drive. The tornado is on top of Flowood Drive now into Rankin County, moving towards 475 Wells. Pearl, seek shelter. Crossgates, uh, it's going to be to you in less than 10 minutes. Brandon in 10 minutes. Brandon Academy at 5 o'clock. Please seek shelter. Again, this is a confirmed tornado now that has just crossed from Jackson and into Rankin County. And we can see the notch and almost the donut hole right there. This is where the tornado is now into Pearl, Wells, and Flowood as it bring up the rotation. There it is, folks. Again, so this is the tornado that just hit downtown Jackson. It is now moving across Flowood Drive uh, and in towards the Wells area, McLaurin. Again, Rankin County, you're under a tornado warning until 530. You need to seek shelter right now. Um, and also, a control booth, if we can get an MDOT camera up here, maybe Highway 80 or from the airport. Okay, well, yeah, let's take it. Let's look at one in Flowood if we can see what's happening out there. Wow. Can you tell me what road this is at? So this is our, so this is near Flowood Drive. Um, so this is near the downtown Flowood area, and this is where we have the confirmed tornado moving into Rankin County. You need to be in your safe place right now for the airport. The International Airport needs to be taking a tornado shelter. Downtown Flowood uh, needs to be seeking shelter. Here's the tornado. We'll circle it for you. It is heading downstream. It is heading east. It is going to likely impact McLaurin Heights. Old Brandon Road, the International Airport, Flowood, the Dogwood area. Anywhere from Lakeland Drive to Highway 80 is where this tornado is going to hit, and that is right at the Jackson Airport. Again, and so we had confirmed tornado damage uh, in downtown Jackson. We have debris. There's the debris right there in downtown crossing Flowood Drive. It's really grainy and hard to see, but we still have that tight rotation. And Ken, uh, we're tracking still multiple circulations along this line. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, scan up and down the line here just uh, just for a second. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Live IMAX 2 full screen. Uh, so what we're seeing here is the reflectivity, the rain, but within this circle here, we've got the um, we've got the velocity and it doesn't look as pronounced here around the Byram area. Of course, there is some interference because of that water tower in uh, Byram there. You can see there's a notch that uh, we're missing some data there. So um, take that with a grain of salt. But we don't uh, see as much down around the Byram area that was coming in from Elton. But if we scan up the line here, it is really obvious right there, right in the middle, now just to the east of downtown Jackson, right on the Pearl River, that we have got a pronounced rotation right there. And remember, the National Weather Service is saying this is a confirmed, it's an observed tornado that you're seeing right here. Um, let's go ahead and query some of those wind speeds. Once again, this is east of Interstate uh, 55, 
downtown Jackson, and then on the other side of the Pearl River, we're looking at a negative 50. That's uh, inbound winds toward the radar site, which is right there in Brandon. Uh, we got a positive 20 on the other side, so that's 70 mile per hour winds right there. Uh, you got to consider that this is a tornado that is on the ground moving to the east at about 50 miles per hour now. So if it's moving to the east, it's going to be moving parallel to Highway 80 over the next several minutes and then crossing Highway 475. Of course, we know that is Airport Road. I believe the airport is right up here, but that's going to be close enough that anybody between Lakeland Drive and Highway 80 in Rankin County needs to take shelter right now because you've got a tornado which is has been producing damage and is moving towards your area very quickly. There is no more time uh, to get into that safe spot. You need to already be there. If you're not there, you got to get there immediately. Now, our producer is telling us that we've got a camera. Okay, so this is Lakeland at Ridgewood. This is going to be a little bit uh, to the north of where the tornado is, but really not that far away. Let's go ahead and take a look at how far away it's going to be. And yeah, it's uh, probably about one to two miles to the north and east of where the tornado is, but close enough that you're getting very strong winds, very heavy rain along the Lakeland Drive area. Um, just seeing if we can see anything there. I'm not sure which direction this is actually pointed. I don't see anything that's obvious that would tell us that there's a tornado in the frame there. But again, squally weather. Uh, this tornado is actually most likely going to be wrapped in rain. You're not going to be able to see it uh, most likely as uh, you're looking outside. So again, let's take a look. Um, that camera was right about here, right along Lakeland Drive, Ridgewood Road, which is going to be right in about this area. So the rotating part of this cell is going to be, I think, between Lakeland Drive and Highway 80, now to the east of downtown Jackson. You see the velocity here, the bright shaded green pixels, those are winds moving toward the radar site. The red is moving away. So it's really obvious uh, right there where the rotating part of this is right along the Pearl River, just to the east of there, moving quickly towards Highway 475 and the airport road. So take shelter right now. The folks in the airport uh, should be taking shelter. If you live in Pearl, if you live in Flowood, if you live in Brandon, you need to be in your safe spot and stay there over the next several minutes. Let's go ahead and track this out to the east here. If it's right around Flowood Drive right now, we're going to track it all the way to the east for the next 15 minutes. And we are looking at, um, it says, yeah, Jackson International Airport at just before the top of the hour. Right now it is 454. So it's going to be there within three to four minutes and then past that Langford at about seven minutes after five o'clock. So um, please take this situation seriously. This is an observed tornado. It has a history of producing damage. It is now moving through the metro. It's already passed through the city of Jackson, and it's going to be moving through Rankin County, moving along uh, Highway 80 and Interstate 20 just to the north of there, and then eventually crossing Highway 471 over the next several minutes. It's crossing 475 where the airport is in just about two minutes, but eventually it's going to make its way, I think, north of Brandon, crossing Highway 471 south of Lakeland Drive in, let's say, five to eight minutes. Uh, Jacob, I'll send it back over to you. Okay, thanks, Ken. And again, I just wanted to show this. I just uh, drew this. We already have uh, storm reports coming in. Uh, this is the <clears throat> Jackson tornado track here. So this was from 435 to 450. It touched down here at Highway 18, Forest Hill, and at our WJTV studios. That's where the National Weather Service confirmed it down. Then there was tornado damage reported possibly in downtown Jackson as this crossed right over I-20 near Jackson State and is now moving into Rankin County. And that's what Ken was tracking for you. So again, we tracked this live for you through downtown Jackson, and we're going to continue to track this as it moves into Rankin County. So I just want to get a wider view here, and we still have to let folks know that we have tornado warnings up north. Just want to give a quick update on those for you. We have a tornado warning now for Holmes County until 530, and then also for Atala, Leak, and Madison until 530. So for the next 30 minutes, we have possible rotation near Cam 
Camden and Goodman. That's moving up towards Singleton and Kosciuszko. So Northern Lee County, Southern Itala County, Camden, tornado shelter now. Now we're going to get back here to the still uh, likely tornado. Um, and also, that looks like a possible tornado near Deerfield in Madison County. There's not a tornado warning on this, uh, but just scanning up and down this line, we could see a spin up at any moment near Nissan Deerfield up towards the Trace. So seek shelter there on the north side of the res in Madison County. Let's get back here to Rankin County. I would still think, wow, it looks like this took a little bit of a north track. They're right over Flowood. So it looks like the tornado, if it's still on the ground, has crossed over for Lakeland Drive in Flowood. I want to take a live view from our downtown tower camera here. We've swung it around, so we're looking in the direction of the tornado. So th this is, we're at Capitol Towers, Secretary of State downtown. There's the Coliseum and Fairgrounds. And what we cannot see is I-55, the Pearl River is right there. And then that abyss of gray is the tornado warned storm over in Rankin County. Uh, and so that's what we're kind of looking at. Oh, I'm sorry, Ken, for that's hitting right. that for you. Uh, so again, we just had gusts up to 45 miles per hour there in Jackson. And again, I just also wanted to give an update to regroup um, that the tornado watch has been expanded into the Pine Belt. We had questions about this earlier. So Prentice, Collins, <laughs> Hattiesburg, Laurel, Raleigh, Bay Springs, Meridian have been added to the tornado watch as this line moves off towards the east. Uh, so that was expected. And we still have the line of damaging winds moving into Brookhaven as well. But again, we're tracking likely, I think this is still an observed tornado, Ken, in Rankin County. And as I pull up here our velocity mode, it is right now over Flowood. Um, and that would be near, I mean, you know, it's crossing there near Old Fannin Road. Hugh Ward Boulevard, Grants Ferry, seek shelter right now. There's the tornado. It has just now crossed Old Fannin Road, and the tornado is still likely going, and it is heading north towards Hugh Ward, Spillway, Dogwood Circle, Audubon Point, Bay Park Drive, that's Spillway Road into Rankin County, the Brandon side of the res. You need to be in your safe place right now. Grants Ferry, uh, their uh, uh, Hidden Hills Parkway, Lakeland Drive North, Manship Road, Wirtz Road. So here's the tornado. There is Old Fannin. It has just passed over uh, the Dogwood area and is now moving to Hugh Ward. If you live anywhere near Hugh Ward, you need to be in your safe place right now. We have a tornado literally moments away from crossing over. And as I switch over to our debris mode, still seeing a little bit indication of some debris here. Um, we also, okay, and again, I mentioned this literally a minute ago and we now have that tornado warning for Deerfield. So likely that tornado did form, wow, it's a water spout, it's over the res, between Lost Rabbit and Goshen Springs. So there's one. That's what we're talking about when we talk about spin-ups, folks. It looks like one or two water spouts over the res now. So again, to orient you, this is the res. There's Lost Rabbit and the Trace. There's Goshen Springs, Sunset Marina, Fannin, the Brandon side of the res, and we have uh, one or two water spouts over the res. Barnes Prairie, these are moving into Rankin County. So if you live along Highway 25, Fannin, Goshen Springs, uh, uh, up there towards the Sunset Marina area on the Rankin side of the res, you need to be in your safe place now. That could come in off the water any moment. Um, and we're still tracking that rotation near Hugh Ward Boulevard as well. So again, we have several tornado warnings now, a wall of tornado warnings for Rankin, Madison, Scott, Leak, and Itala counties. Uh, and Ken, we're just seeing so many kinks along that line. You've got Live MX 12 up. Yes, uh, we certainly are. The one that we were tracking through downtown Jackson, um, yeah, I think it's shifted a little bit farther to the north. Uh, take a look at the line here. This is that tornado warning. It's been pared down a little bit. We have got an update on this warning. The forward motion a little bit slower now at about 40 miles per hour. And before this warning was issued a little bit farther to the north, I was thinking that they may adjust this polygon a little bit and shift it to the north because that rotation is right on the northern edge now of this polygon. But what they did was they just issued a tornado warning between the two that were already issued. So the entire line now really has a tornado warning with it because we got this rotation, but also a couple more farther to the north of the line near the reservoir moving into northern Rankin County. So just like we saw a few minutes ago when we had two, three rotations in Hines County moving toward the city of Jackson. 
We're seeing the exact same thing with this line now that it's in Rankin County. We're seeing multiple rotations within this line, and I want to show you what I'm talking about here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our velocity, and there you go. Take a look. You see that kink right there? That's what we're talking about. That is a rotation right there. That is now north are on the north side of Lakeland Drive in Rankin County. I believe that's the one that came through downtown Jackson. So there's one of the rotations. There's one of the tornadoes. But you go farther up the line, and you're going to see more of those uh, rotations. Take a look at that. We've got, um, we're going to pan down just a little bit here, and I'm going to move our velocity scope a little bit farther up the line, and I'm going to circle where we have the next rotation, and it's right there south of Canton and east of Interstate 55. Again, all this is moving to the east at about 40, 45 miles per hour. So basically, anywhere, and the radar just updating, so let's update this uh, for you once again. And right there, it's really obvious where that rotation is. If we take a look at the velocity right there, east of Canton, north of Sand Hill, on the northern end of the reservoir, moving toward the northern part of Rankin County. So let's zoom in right there to that one. Yeah, that's uh, pretty evident that we've got rotation there. And if we take off the velocity, you can even tell just by looking at the uh, reflectivity, just by looking at the radar, that that's where we would think a tornado would be with the winds pushing out the rain right there but then we've got a notch right in here so there's where we've got rotation right along highway 25 and that's the Natchez Trace Parkway so we've got a tornado here I think what is likely a tornado moving right up the Natchez Trace uh, just on the northern end of the reservoir and moving from northern Rankin County into Madison County. So one of several rotations that we've got within this line. So let's zoom out here and we're going to track the entire line off to the uh, east at about 40 miles per hour. So here's the line where we've got multiple rotations and then we're going to track it eastward to the edge of this uh, polygon right there. And there you go. We've got, of course, several locations that are going to be in the path of this squall line where we could see several embedded tornadoes within this line. It's going to be near Fannin, 506, Brandon at 512, Pelahatchie at 526. And then once we get uh, past Rankin County, we're looking at places like Leak and Scott County uh, being affected by this, but closer to the bottom of the hour at about 530. So I just noticed that we do have an update on the southernmost tornado warning. So I'm going to zoom in there and I'm going to query this so we can get the latest information. Um, now they are saying this is a radar indicated rotation, no longer um, a storm spotter confirmed or an observed tornado. They're saying the update is that it is a radar indicated rotation moving to the east at about 40 miles per hour, located near Fannin or Brandon, moving to the east at about 40 miles per hour. So uh, let's Fannin, Brandon, this area, we'll push it off to the east over the next 30 minutes. So some of the uh, smaller communities will pop up here. Crossgates ranking at about 518 in Pelahatchie at close to the bottom of the hour. Let's uh, go farther up the line here. And I'm really most interested in, so this is a radar indicated rotation now. This one looks to me to be much more pronounced. Now I would think it's more likely that we have got a tornado being generated here in Southern Madison, northern Rankin County, right along the Pearl River on the northern end of the reservoir, crossing the Natchez Trace. So let's just take a look at the uh, velocity uh, with this one. All right, it's going to be right there. You see that between Sand Hill and the Natchez Trace? That, I believe, is where we've got the most pronounced rotation right now along this line. So this area rotating and moving to the east at about 40 miles per hour. Now what you're looking at is the northern part of Rankin County. Rankin County is right here. We got Madison County to the north and we've got this little panhandle right there of Scott County. I think it's going to be affecting 
all of these areas, Madison, Scott, and Northern Rankin over the next several minutes. We're going to track this right along Highway 25 in the Natchez Trace, and I think it's going to be crossing over into Scott County in about uh, 10 minutes or so, and then eventually getting into Lee County along Highway 25 uh, in about 15 minutes. So, Jacob, that's the, again, the, um, to me, what looks like the strongest rotation we've got along this line right now. But, of course, uh, we've got multiple tornado warnings along the line stretching from, let's go ahead and take a look at the warnings again, stretching from Rankin back through Scott, Leak, Madison, um, and parts of Itala counties. Yep. Yeah, I agree, Ken. That's really where we're seeing some of the worst. Um, and we, again, are still getting in damage reports. Again, I drew this track out for us. And I want to just show this again. The Jackson tornado downtown from 435 to 450. It hit Forest Hill and WJTV, moved over JSU and downtown Jackson. And Walt, we're getting in numerous reports from across the city downtown. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a look at some of that damage right now in downtown Jackson. Uh, after the storms passed through the city, the Hines County EOC confirms that there is damage across downtown Jackson on State Street and University Street with power lines and trees down and at least one roof torn off a building. Now we have a crew that's headed up in that direction to the scene right now. We'll let you know when we learn more. Uh, have we got some of that uh, video? Uh, uh, there's power outages that we're showing on the screen right now. Okay, let's take a look at the power outages across Mississippi at the moment. Uh, DOT US is reporting about 43,000 power outages across the state. And of course, this is some damage that we had earlier when we had a tree that fell on the uh, governor's mansion in downtown Jackson. Uh, but again, the uh, National Weather Service has reported that there is damage in downtown Jackson and uh, that there are trees down on State Street and University Street, power lines and trees down, and at least one roof torn off a building, all that in downtown Jackson. And this uh, damage that you see there at the governor's mansion, this came earlier this afternoon as it was just the gusty, the strong winds in advance of this line of storms that just passed through the city. I have a doorbell camera at my house out in Rankin County, uh, out in the Fannin area. It looks clear. I mean, the good news is my doorbell camera is still there, so at least the Fannin area looks clear. This storm could have, uh, have cleared the uh, Fannin area, it looks like. So, Ken, it looks like that we're talking about, of course, we still have lots of lightning on the camera back behind us here. So yep. we're having a nasty storm in the downtown uh, Jackson area right now. Jacob, uh, you got an update for us. Yeah, I mean, a lot of lightning still here in Jackson. I know the severe weather is over for Hines County, but it is still pouring rain, lots of lightning. A tornado warning continues for Rankin, Madison, Scott, and Lee counties, and so we need to track where these possible tornadoes are. Again, the one just scanning up here the line for us, the one that stands out to me is right now uh, near Farm Haven. Yes. Oh, okay, wow, yeah. So it looks like if we take this back. Yep, there it is. Yeah, there's the, so this is what we call a tornado debris signature right there along the Natchez Trace uh, from about five, ten minutes ago. Looks like the debris has disappeared now, but it looks like I think we had this touchdown near Brown's Landing <coughs> on the north side of the res there in Madison County. <coughs> and now the possible tornado. So there it was. This is the res here, and it tracked up the Natchez Trace, now is near Farm Haven. Uh, and moving towards Leake County. So this is kind of our strongest rotation right now. Um, and just to put a little bit of perspective there, so there it is, there's Farm Haven. And so this is the county line. So we've got Scott County, we've got Leake County, we've got Madison County and Rankin County. This is kind of where the four come together. So this is now near Farm Haven going up the trace towards uh, Bertice, Oklahoma, there in Leake County, eventually towards the Pigtown area, and it would cross Highway 25. Ludlow, I think this is going to pass just north of you. I think this is going to be south of Raytown, but a tornado uh, still could touch down at any moment as this goes into Leake County. So let's time this out for us as we take this down. Carthage, this would be heading in your direction in about 20 minutes. 536 arrival of this tornado in Carthage. A tornado warning continues until 6 p.m. for Leake County. You need to be in your tornado shelter in Carthage because this storm is moving rapidly in your direction up the trace, up Highway 25, and in towards Carthage. So again, Carthage, please seek shelter and also areas there along the Leake 
and Scott County line. And again, just looking at radar here in Brandon, we're close to the radar, but I don't see much in the way of rotation in central Rankin County. Ken, do you? Actually just um, updated the polygon for the, the storm that we're tracking, uh, moving along the Natchez Trace, and now they're saying it's a radar-indicated rotation. Okay. So it may have lifted there. We saw the debris that had been produced, but then that disappeared um, over the past uh, few minutes. So we're talking about... Uh, we're talking about this tornado warning right here. This is the one that we've been most interested in over the past several minutes because we were talking about this several minutes ago about this was, it was really obvious when it was around the reservoir and then moving up along the Natchez Trace, you could really see the pronounced rotation there. And that was the most pronounced rotation we had along the line, even though we've got tornado warnings uh, south of there and north of there. This is the one that looked like uh, it was most serious. And sure enough, we had had a tornado debris signature coming out of there. So we likely had a tornado on the ground south of Shoko near the Natchez Trace, but no tornado debris signature right now. And the rotation, even though it's still there, it's not as pronounced. So the National Weather Service, they've upgraded this tornado warning, this polygon to call it a um, radar indicated rotation. It's not to say that you shouldn't take it seriously because it could tighten up once again, maybe put down another tornado. That's what happened uh, eight days ago, back on March the 22nd. We had one parent storm that would put down a tornado, would lift up for a little while, then put down another tornado. We had several tornado tracks in a line. We had more than two dozen tornado tracks across Mississippi from last week's storm. So that could happen again with these storms. It could put down a tornado, which we think it did near the reservoir, moving into southern Madison and northern Rankin County. It likely is not doing that now, but you're still under a tornado warning in northern Scott and in Lee County, the city of Carthage included, and that could tighten up, put down another tornado warning as it approaches your area. So please get in your safe spot, stay there, and wait until this is past your area uh, before uh, it looks like you're going to be done with this. And this is what we're talking about right here. Uh, you see that uh, tornado warning? It's the red polygon right there. And this is where we still have the radar indicated rotation. It's crossed the Natchez Trace already, but we're still seeing rotation right there south of the Natchez Trace, extreme northern Rankin County. And this is that little panhandle of Scott County. So it's going to be moving across the panhandle uh, right there and then um, emerging out into southwestern Leake County. So along Highway 25, the communities of Bertice, uh, Good Hope, Lena, Pigtown, and let's track some of these streets. That's Utah Road that could be affected by the storm. We'll zoom in a little bit more closely where we have the circle drawn right there. That's where we've got the radar indicated rotation and that's going to be moving along Highway 25, Craig Road, Utah Road, Good Hope, New Ground Road, Lovelock Road, all being affected over the next few minutes as this moves to the east and northeast at about 40 miles per hour, covering the next seven miles. Uh, it's going to be moving across Highway 25 in likely less than 10 minutes. That's the most significant rotation that we're looking at right now. A little bit farther to the south as we're scanning the line in Rankin County. Thankfully, we're not seeing anything that really jumps out at us. And this tornado warning, I believe, is set to expire in about 15 minutes at the bottom of the hour. So hopefully that will be allowed to expire in about 15 minutes. The one for Scott and Leake County that's going to be in effect until the top of the hour, until 6 p.m., a little bit farther to the north. This one, uh, which includes northern Leake County and Italic County, including the city of Kosciuszko, that's going to be in effect for the next 15 minutes until 5.30. And then we've got one a little bit farther to the north. Let's uh, query that. I believe that one also expires yeah, at 5.30. So everything's set to expire here in about 15 minutes, except for this one where we have the most pronounced rotation right there moving into that panhandle of Scott County. That one in effect until 6 p.m. And we've got a pretty populated area, the city of Carthage, that may ultimately be in the path of the storm. So let's zoom in. Once again, I'm going to circle where the rotating part of this is circle it right there. It right now is in the panhandle. 
to the north and west of Ludlow, tracking to the north and east at about 40 miles per hour. So uh, we're going to track it to the edge of the cone over the next 30 minutes, and it's going to take it near or over these communities, Bertice, Lena, Tuscola, Freeney and Standing Pine between 524 and 546. Remember, these storms have a history of producing damage, so please take this seriously. Get in your safe spot and stay there for the next several minutes. Speaking of the damage, we're going to send it over to Walt Grayson. Hey, thank you, Ken. You know, we've got this big line of storms that's passing through our viewing area right now, and more and more people are gathering at storm shelters to try and stay safe, which is a very good idea. At the Rankin County Safe Room over in Brandon, she joins us now. Marie, it sounds like you got a crowd over there with you. Rankin County Storm Shelter off Marquette Drive here. In, I'm here at the Rankin County Storm Shelter off Marquette Drive here in Brandon. People are steadily coming into the shelter to, to, to escape the severe weather. The Rankin County Storm Shelter opened their doors for citizens during the severe weather threat. Many people have brought their pets and other items like books and laptops to keep them busy as they wait out the storm. Unsure of what's coming, to, uh, unsure of what's to come ahead. For many, they say this isn't their first time at the storm shelter. Many people say this isn't their first time here at the storm shelter, but this is the place where they feel the most safest during threatening weather. For 12 News, I'm Marie Menneville. All right, uh, just want to take an overall view of what's happening right now. So we're going to put uh, just back on the radar and we'll take a look at the uh, lightning strikes as well. So notice our squall line is pretty much lined up right along Interstate 55. North of Jackson, it's east of the interstate, south of Jackson, it's just to the west of the interstate. Now this entire area is still under a tornado watch for, I believe, the next several hours. Um, it, that's been extended in the Pine Belt, I believe, through 9 p.m. Uh, okay, so we've got a tornado watch for actually most of the state of Mississippi still in effect. It goes until 9 o'clock for our easternmost counties, so we can't let our guard down, um, especially if you live east of where this squall line is right now. You've barely seen anything today. If you live in McGee, if you live in Covington, if you live in Prentice, if you live in Columbia, Hattiesburg, um, Laurel, Meridian, those areas, it's just been a warm and a windy and a muggy day, but I can tell you what is headed in your direction is a nasty squall line of what is likely going to be at a minimum severe thunderstorms and we could see tornadoes once again being produced um, within this line embedded within the line it has happened earlier this afternoon i think we are going to get a lot of damage reports coming out over the next several hours because we have seen uh, these storms track across the warren county area Issaquina County, parts of the Southern Delta, and right here across parts of the Metro as well. Here's a look at our current warnings that we've got in effect. So we got a couple of tornado warnings. The one for Rankin County has, it looks like, been dropped. But we do have this uh, two northernmost warnings for Northern Leak and Itala counties uh, until 530. So those have about 10 more minutes on those warnings. The one where we have the most pronounced rotation right now, it's a radar indicated rotation, but it's the healthiest looking rotation that we can see within this line is right now moving from Scott and Madison counties into Leak County. So that's the most important thing happening right now. There's your rotation right there, still along the Natchez Trace and Highway 25, tracking to the northeast at about 40 miles per hour. We'll take it to the edge of this polygon right here, and it could very well track over the city of Carthage. So we want you folks in Carthage and anywhere around Carthage uh, that appear to be uh, downstream or in the path of the storm, we need you to be safe, get into your safe spot right now, and stay there until the storm is past your area. Now, if you live in Rankin County, I would say, or Madison County, you're now to the west of the leading edge of this line where we're getting the rotations and you can breathe I think a sigh of relief in this area right now. You're still going to get some gusty winds, you're still going to get some dangerous lightning strikes and some fairly decent rainfall out of this uh, in Canton and Camden and Pickens and Bentonia but uh, 
the most severe part is passed by to the east of you, but rotating right there, and we could see rotations developing anywhere along this line. Notice we've got severe thunderstorm warnings along the line south of that tornado warning that does include the metro and places like Apaya, Simpson County, Lincoln County, and farther to the south into a mid county. So we're going to be watching for rotations anywhere along this line to the south of us because we're in a tornado watch and they could definitely be upgraded uh, to uh, tornado warnings. Let's go ahead and scan this line. We'll just take it from south to north to see if there's anything that is really obvious that pops out as far as a rotation is concerned. Here's some good news. I'm not seeing anything right now as we're using the scope tool down through Lincoln County and Copiah County and Simpson County, uh, even Southern Rankin County, nothing that really jumps out at me um, south of Interstate 20. So that is some very good news. Um, right now, we could still see severe weather out of this. We could still see damaging straight line winds on the order of 60, 70 miles per hour. So you still need to take shelter, but I'm not seeing a rotation on the south end of this line, south of Interstate 20. North of the interstate, it's a different story. That's where we still have that rotation right there. I believe it's now moving into Leake County. So remember, it was right around that panhandle of Scott County. Well, now it looks like it's transitioned into Leake County. And hopefully, the National Weather Service will give us an update on this polygon uh, pretty soon because it's moving uh, pretty quickly through this uh, warned area right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, rotation there. We'll take that off. That looks a little bit old. Uh, to me, so let's check out our velocity product right here. And to me, it looks like uh, if we've got a rotation, it's going to be right there, uh, pretty close to Highway 25, north of Bertice, and just to the uh, west of Pigtown, northwest of Good Hope, around, uh, let's say, Yakanukani Road and south of Oklahoma. So this is the area where we've got the best potential for a rotation right now. Radar indicated, not confirmed, but if there's going to be a tornado that's going to be put down over the next several minutes, this is your most likely scenario. It's going to be right here in Leake County moving towards the city of Carthage over the next 15 to 20 minutes. Jacob, I'll send it back to you. And so here's our live look from downtown Jackson. We're still having the rain in the Hines County area. Lots of lightning as well, some thunder. Right now, though, nothing severe. However, our winds are certainly still gusting out ahead of this line of storms, this especially down in Macomb, 1135 um, down towards the south. So again, we remain in a level four moderate risk. We have a tornado watch in effect for all of central Mississippi and the Pine Belt until 9 p.m. Uh, do I need to go over to Walt? Do we have an update uh, from the field? Yeah, uh, joining me now on the phone is uh, Michael Bolden. He, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I got ahead of myself. Okay, yeah. So okay, we're, we're, we're going to have him on the phone. Uh, there's been some damage in downtown Jackson. Uh, oh. Michael, we're getting him on the phone. He's out of JSU. He's going to tell us about it, but not quite yet. So uh, carry on for another couple of minutes there, Jacob. We'll be right back. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Again, you know, we just had a confirmed tornado move through downtown Jackson, Jackson State. Hines County, Rankin County. So, of course, there is a lot of damage in the metro. We have half a dozen crews out there uh, finding those spots. And, of course, we're going to continue coverage here uh, for the next uh, hour as we try to bring you that. And, of course, uh, some reports uh, from our management and leaders here around the city as well soon. Just here's the overview of Live IMAX 12. Severe thunderstorm warnings from Amit County through Lincoln County, through Copaya County, into Simpson County, Rankin, and still a possible tornado entering Leake County as well. And that's where we are still watching the potential for a spin-up tornado near the Singleton area and also near Carthage. So Bolatusha, Singleton, along the Natchez Trace near Thomastown, you need to be in your safe place. That's where Highway 43 is, and further south near Pigtown, a little bit of rotation near Lena or Walnut Grove as well. But again, in the metro, not seeing too much in the way of rotation. Um, let's see, down near Pat, we'll have to watch that near Florence, Pat, and Central Rankin County. Maybe some weak rotation down there for y'all. But again, a lot of damage has gone through downtown Jackson. Walt, I think now that we have an update uh, from parts of the city.
Bolden. Uh, Michael is the executive director of facilities and management at Jackson State. So, uh, Michael, tell us what y'all are seeing out at JSU right now. as we speak. And Michael, I'm sorry, go back to, well, I think we had a knob turned down. Can you go back through what you just said one more time? Uh, yes, I said we are experiencing a lot of rain and wind, but we uh, don't have any confirmed damage. We are surveying the campus as we speak. Did you have a tornado out there? I mean, it was heading in that direction. Did you see anything that could look like rotation or a tornado? That was a report of some rotation. Uh, on campus, but we did not get anything that was confirmed, touchdown or impact. Oh, well, that's great. Uh, so no injuries and so far no damage or anything like that? Correct. Good deal. I hope it stays that way. Michael, we'll be back in touch with you and uh, get an update later. Or, or you get in touch with us if you find anything that you might have overlooked because it's still, I know there's a lot of rain going on out there right now. Yes. Okay, we all stay safe. There's a lot of lightning, too. Thank you. Michael Bolden, the executive director of uh, facilities and management out of Jackson State. And Jacob looks like the, the tornado that we saw that went through downtown Jackson, if there was damage, it wasn't at Jackson State. At least that's what we're assuming right now anyway. Yeah, that's good news. I mean, it was probably very close. And I want to go through some of the storm reports we now have. Again, these are going to continue to come in, and we have our teams out there surveying damage as well. But again, just to recap, uh, back at 430, there was a tornado confirmed and heard here at WJTV. That was at 437. And then we can go into downtown Jackson. So there's Jackson State, Gerald Lynch Street. There's Silas Brown, Gallatin Street. Three tornado reports moved through J south of JSU and Jackson, kind of between uh, West Capitol and Highway 80. So the first one there near JSU was a utility pole downed at University Drive or University Boulevard at dawn. So that's right there near the JSU campus. Uh, we also had trees down on Summer Street and structural damage on Gallatin Street. So that's right there near Battlefield Park. Several trees were down. You know, Highway 80 Gallatin, the Gallatin Street exit from I-20, that kind of goes up between JSU and downtown. They had structural damage there. And then there was also uh, building damage on Silas Brown and Jefferson. That's downtown Jackson. Trees are down on Commerce Street, a large tree down at Silas Brown in Congress. So that's just some of the reports from Hines County EMA in downtown Jackson. We have crews heading to all of those locations and we hope to bring you live photos of the downtown Jackson tornado damage within the next couple of minutes. So you want to stay tuned for that. Again, we're still watching the storms exit to the east. We still have tornado warnings now and we'll go over to our warning policy. Polygons. This red polygon is a tornado warning uh, that continues, let's see, until 6 o'clock. So it looks like the, in about 30 minutes, these warnings are going to expire. We still have them, though, from Forkville, uh, Ludlow, Harperville, towards Lena, Walnut Grove, Carthage, Singleton, and Kosciuszko. This is where we could see a spin-up moving through Atala, Leak, and northern Scott counties. On the south side, though, we still have a wall of damaging winds. Rankin County, Simpson County, Lawrence County, Lincoln County, Kapaya County, Amit County, and eventually Pike County. Damaging winds here, 60 miles per hour, going to be possible uh, as this line of storms moves through. And we're seeing some damaging winds down there as well. Want to point out that I'm watching a little bit of rotation down near Liberty here in Amit County. That could approach Macomb in the next 30 minutes or so. So that's something down the line we need to watch. Again, we are not in the clear across South Mississippi. We still have uh, several more hours to go before the severe threat ends for the Pine Belt. So these severe storms still have to move through Monticello, Tylertown, Columbia, Bassfield, Collins, McGee, Bay Springs, Laurel and Hattiesburg. And that's going to take a couple hours to get these through. The tornado side of the storms up here to the north, that is exiting. And hopefully by 6 o'clock, they'll be out of central Mississippi. But to the south, we still have damaging winds. And I'm just watching for any kinks on the line. Um, nothing definitive, which is good news. But certainly still some damaging winds trying to move through as well. So again, here's the tornado watch. This includes everybody. Uh, Issaquina County has been removed. But everybody else is still in a tornado watch from the Jackson Metro to Kosciuszko, Carthage, Bay Springs, Laurel, Raleigh, down to Hattiesburg, Macomb, Tylertown. Tornado watch till 8, 9 o'clock. This also extends to the Alabama state line, Meridian, 
up 45 into Starkville. So we have that tornado watch there. And again, here's a live look from our downtown tower camera. And I wonder, I know we have crews in the area. I wonder if we can swing the camera around and see some tornado damage as well downtown. That's something we can work on as well. So again, strong storms are moving through the Jackson Metro right now. We still have a severe thunderstorm warning for Rankin County, and that goes for Brandon, Fannin uh, until 545. So 15, 15 more minutes of damaging wind, 60 miles per hour here from, say, the Florence area to Brandon to Fannin. That's going to push into Pelahatchee pretty soon. And then we're also watching rotation up in a leak and Scott County. So this is a tornado warning until six o'clock. It's actually our only tornado warning now. And this for is for leak, Madison, Rankin, and Scott. And when we look at our wind mode, our velocity, I don't see much in the way of rotation. So that's good news. So we're hoping that this continues to weaken. Still though, a strong line of thunderstorms across central Mississippi and Chief Meteorologist Ken South has an overview for us on Live IMAX 12. Yeah, thanks, Jacob. Uh, appreciate that. Yeah, we were uh, looking forward to the bottom of the hour when we had three tornado warnings set to expire and they were allowed to expire, replaced by severe thunderstorm warnings. But that's a good sign that we're not seeing as much rotation along this line as we did earlier. Now, that's not to say that we couldn't see more develop. Remember, we're still under a tornado watch until 9 o'clock this evening, and that certainly is possible anywhere along this line. In fact, as I say that, there we go. We got another tornado warning that was just issued for northern Leake County and into Italic County. So let's go ahead and examine this one. And just by looking at the radar near Singleton, you can kind of see what they're looking at there. Um, there's a hook right there. You see where the radar juts out right there. Strong winds blowing in this direction. And then we've got a notch right there. Just by looking at the radar, you can see it uh, right there. So let's go ahead and query um, this warning. Um, this is a tornado warning for northwestern Lee County and eastern Atala County until 615. That's about the next uh, 45 minutes or so. Uh, this storm moving to the northeast at about 60 miles per hour. It's a radar indicated rotation. Some of the places that are going to be in the path of the storm, Smyrna and Zama, Z-A-M-A, at around uh, 540 this evening. Right now it's about 534. So in just the next few minutes, it's going to be near both of those communities. So uh, give me just a second here. I'm going to type in that forward motion into live IMAX 12 and we'll go ahead and track this new uh, tornado warning out for you um, across Atala and northern Leak counties. All right, we've got it plugged in there. So let's track the storm out. That's where the rotation is. And this one moving in a little bit different direction. Most of these storms uh, they've been moving off to the east along with the squall line. Well, this one is moving north and east, so we're going to take it out uh, to the northern part of this polygon here over the next 20 minutes. These are the communities that are going to be in the path of the storm uh, between 535 and 554. So the next 20 minutes, we're looking at Dowell, Dossville, Patterson, Ethel, and Rural Hill. So all of those areas, I believe, are going to be uh, to the east. That's right, to the east of Kosciuszko, eventually getting up toward the McCool area. So let's go ahead and take a look at the velocity with this uh, because I do believe that it's probably going to really stick out, and it does. Um, so we'll zoom in right there near the Singleton area, and there you see those really pronounced winds right there near Highway 35 and just to the north of Singleton, and we'll query some of these wind speeds so you're uh, so you'll know what you're dealing with here. And look at that. We've got a 92 mile per hour winds. Now, we've probably got some winds moving in the opposite direction on the other side there. Still painted in red, but I'm sure we're probably going to see some green popping up there here in just the next few minutes. But we're looking at at least 90 mile per hour winds at cloud level. We don't know what's happening at the ground, but 92 mile per hour winds could reach the ground uh, at a moment's notice with the storm. It's a radar indicated rotation, but if it reaches the ground, we're looking at a tornado now moving through northern Lee County and crossing the county line very soon into Atala County. If it's moving to the northeast, it's only about two miles or about two minutes away uh, from crossing the county line into Atala County. Remember, it's moving at 60 miles per hour, so it's moving about a mile a minute. It's not wasting any time as it moves from Highway 35 
into Itala County. So let's zoom out a little bit and we'll track this once again so you can see areas that are downstream of this, exactly the areas that are going to be affected by this potential tornado over the next eight minutes. And we're looking at Patterson at about 544 and there you see some of those county roads now mostly in Itala County uh, that the storm is going to be moving across. We're looking at Itala County Road 1106, 5131 and 5047 over the next five to eight minutes. So that's the most pronounced rotation that we're looking at right now. Let's take a look at all of our warnings and we just have the two tornado warnings. This one farther to the south, that's the one that we were tracking across the reservoir. It had uh, debris that was produced by that storm uh, as it was near the reservoir and right along the Natchez Trace. Then it seemed to lift up and uh, we got an update on that uh, storm saying it was a radar indicated rotation and right now we're not really seeing anything uh, that really stands out as far as a rotation is concerned with that storm. So maybe they'll cancel this one a little bit early. It was moving from Oklahoma and Pigtown toward Carthage, but again, you just don't see anything that really stands out in terms of rotation uh, with this cell. So we're not going to uh, focus too much more on this one. Uh, this new tornado warning farther to the north moving into Itala County. That's where we do see a pronounced rotation. This one's easy to pick out. That's our newest warning that's going to be in effect until 615. So let's track it out. Well, there we go. This is what I was expecting <clears throat> a few minutes ago. Remember, we, we saw the red and I thought, well, OK, we're, we're going to give it a new, few more scans and we're likely going to see uh, some green popping out. And that's exactly what happened there, although the new scan just came in and the green disappeared. But you can definitely see that there's a rotation right there. And remember, it's moving quickly. So it, to me, it has already crossed over the county line from uh, Leak into Itala County. Uh, it is most likely now just a few miles to the east of Highway 35 near Atala Road 1106, moving at about a mile a minute towards Highway 19 in Atala County. Should take it about seven minutes to cross Highway 19 east of Kosciuszko. Uh, Jacob, if you got some more information, we'll send it to you. Yeah, on this storm, the National Service. Service. Yeah, the National Weather Service telling us now uh, that this is a confirmed tornado entering <clears throat> Atala County. There is a debris here on radar and it's hard to pick out but Ken was just showing it to you there it is Atala Road 1106 and there is debris right now on our debris tracker and I will circle it for you as we switch over to our velocity mode there's the storm the tornado on the ground it's now observed our radar confirmed at Atala Road 1106 you need to be in your safe place right now there is the debris signature. So it is crossing over from Leak County into Itala County. And forget, folks, if this holds together, again, it started near Singleton, it's going to head up near Patterson. So again, this is more rural Itala County, but you need to seek shelter if you live in this area between, if you live from Highway 35 East to Patterson. So again, I'll try to call out some of the roads here. It's pretty rural, but still, we've got, again, this is Itala County, County Road 1110, 1106, Atala Road 5131, Ridge Road, Atala Road 5047, Patterson, County Road 5033, Atala County Road 5041. This goes all the way up to Highway 19, and I'll go ahead and put a forecast track on this. Hey, hey, no, just yeah. Second, they canceled the tornado warning farther to the south. I just wanted to pass that oh, along. Oh, that's good. So the folks in uh, Madison, I believe it was, yep. Madison, Rankin, and Scott counties, they can breathe a little bit easier okay. now. That tornado warning is now canceled. So the only yep. one is the one that Jacob was just tracking through Itala County. So I'll, let's go ahead and send it back to Jacob. Okay. He's doing a good job of tracking that uh, Itala County storm. Yeah, so again, so this red polygon now, it's only in Itala County. That's where we have uh, the only tornado warning now. And that tornado warning is going until uh, 615. Notice, though, it is an observed tornado. We have seen this um, on debris tracker here on Live IMAX 12. So there's the circulation. It's not going to impact Kosciuszko, but it's heading towards Ethel and Patterson. So you need to be in your safe place right now if you live on the western side of Itala County. Let's zoom in and get a better view of this tornadic storm. Again, between Kosciuszko and Patterson. So here's Kosciuszko. This is just 
to the southeast over at Tala Road 5131. So that means it's about to cross Highway 14 north of Patterson uh, and move up towards the Ethel and eventually the McCool area. McCool is in this tornado warning. Ethel Patterson, seek shelter right now. The good news is I lost the debris signature. It still could still be on the ground though because this is a more rural area of uh, Itala County. We still have that kind of curve um, in the radar. This is where we have this little bit of a notch, what we call an S shape, an S echo. And that's where we could have still a tornado right now in Itala County. It's going to be just east of Kosciuszko, crossing Highway 14 now, heading up towards Ethel and eventually towards McCool. So please seek shelter now. Um, I'm going to put a tornado track on this for you. Again, this is still observed. It's moving north at 60 miles per hour. And here is the forecast track for that. That takes us to McCool at 555. So about 15 more minutes of this tornado storm in Itala County. It's moving north, about to cross Highway 14. As we go back to our velocity mode, that's still where we have this tight rotation between Ethel and Patterson. And as I circle that for you, there it is. That would be the tornado. It was confirmed. It was on the ground moments ago. It may lift. It may still be on the ground. We don't know for sure, but it's about to cross Highway 14, moving up towards the Tala Road 5205 near Ethel and McCool. Please seek shelter. Okay, so it looks like that we have an update from Hines County, so I'm going to send it over to Melanie. Jacob, thank you. Joining me now over the phone is the Hines County EOC Director, Joey Perkins. Mr. Perkins, thanks for being with us. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us what um, what Hines County has experienced thus far? I know you haven't probably been able to judge all of, of the damage, but what can you tell us? Uh, we've got trees and power lines down, uh, you know, different areas of the county, Byram Terry area, um, from maybe 18 and Sidewell towards Battlefield Park. Uh, we're looking in those areas now. There is some... Um, some roof damage to houses in the Battlefield Park area uh, and some commercial businesses along Gallatin Street. Uh, so we're we're looking in all the areas downtown uh, and then back towards, you know, 18 and Sidewell, uh, just assessing the damage at this time. Mr. Perkins? Uh, yes. I, I I'm so sorry, they were talking to me somewhat over you. Let me ask you this, did anyone actually see or uh, do you know if the tornado actually touched down anywhere? Uh, we had some units observe the funnel cloud around um, I-20 and, and 220. Uh, don't know that it actually was on the ground. So what are you, what are you thinking um, uh, as far as damage wise, um, uh, going to keep people busy for a while? Uh, maybe so. You know, we've got a little bit of damage. Like I say, we're still assessing it now. It's still early on. Uh, so we'll, we'll know a little more on that uh, later on. Okay. What about uh, power outages? Yes. Uh, you know, there's trees and power lines down, uh, kind of scattered throughout. So there are going to be some without power. All right. Well, we, we will uh, uh, check back with you probably later this evening to see where we stand there. But thank you so much for guiding us uh, through what, what the uh, area is experiencing, particularly that downtown area, as you said. That's correct. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jacob, we'll send it back over to you. Okay, uh, thanks so much, Melanie. So again, we're continuing to track that tornado warning here in Italic County uh, and also now a new severe thunderstorm warning for Rankin, Scott, and Smith counties. We'll get to that in just a second. I want to zoom down here uh, to Franklin County where uh, this, we didn't have any tornado warnings down here, but uh, about uh, an, uh, 45 minutes ago, there was a funnel cloud report near McCall Creek, and that storm moved into Lincoln County. So there was no tornado warning down there. I don't know if it touched down, but that's interesting. Again, showing that even in South Mississippi, we could still have the potential uh, for a tornado. We're still watching weak rotation approach Pike County. Of course, damaging winds moving through Pike, Walthall, Lincoln and Lawrence counties where severe thunderstorm warnings are. Okay, let's go to this new severe thunderstorm warning. This is kind of a wide one here. Some damaging winds possible with this for Rankin, Scott, Simpson and Smith counties until 630. So 45 more minutes. We can see damaging winds here. It's right now in Pelahatchie, in Delo, uh, near Puckett, and it's moving into Forkville, into Scott County, and into northern Smith County as well. So that goes until 630. The good news is in this line, I don't really see much in the way 
of rotation and up and down this not seeing as much rotation as we did earlier which is good news but we still uh, have that rotation up in Itala County uh, and Chief Meteorologist Ken South is still watching this tornado warning up near Kosciuszko. Ken? All right uh, thank you Jacob appreciate it we're already focused into Itala County I do want to uh, sign off for our uh, viewers in WHLT in Hattiesburg. Uh, we're going to sign off for now, but just know that the squall line is moving toward your area. You're under a tornado watch, so if we get any warnings that are upgraded to tornado warnings, we're going to break in for you and let you know exactly what's happening in your area. But for now, we're going to turn you back over to regular programming. But for WJTV, we still do have tornado warnings in effect for our area actually just one morning it's for eastern Itali county until 6 15 that's about the next uh, 28 minutes or so but i don't think it's going to be in a tally county for that length of time just by looking at the radar here we can see that there's a little bit of a notch right here now north of patterson that is where we would think the tornado is but just to confirm it we're going to take a look at the velocity we're going to take a look inside the storm and you know what we look for by now we look for the reds and the greens that are right next to one another, and we actually do see that uh, to the north of Patterson. You see uh, winds moving in one direction at 36, the opposite direction at about 20 miles per hour. That's between 50 and 60 mile per hour winds. So, yes, we do have still rotation. It is just radar indicated rotation right now, but it's there. And of course, these storms have a history of producing tornadoes, of producing damage. So, this is enough that we want you folks in eastern Itala County to take precautions in case it does put down a tornado. That's the reason we're on the air is because we want to give you the warning before the tornado touches down. It doesn't do any good uh, to give you a warning after a tornado touches down. We want to do that before it happens so you can get in your safe spot and stay safe when weather like this is passing through. So there's your rotation right there. We knew, know it's moving uh, to the northeast at about uh, 60 miles per hour. It's moving at about a mile per minute. So this one moving in this direction and eventually that's going to take it over. I believe that's in uh, uh, Louisville. What county is Louisville in? Y'all give me a <laughs> went uh, east of Itala County. Um, <laughs> Um, so this uh, is where the tornado is uh, going to be tracking here over the next several minutes. Um, it, it is Winston. Okay. Sorry, Melanie, you were right on the money there. So um, let's, uh, again, track this north and east. And it looks like the biggest community that's going to be in the path of this potential tornado is the town of McCool. And it looks like it's going to get there right at the top of the hour at about 6 p.m. So if you live uh, along, let's say, Highway 14 or east of Highway 12 or east of the Natchez Trace in Itala County, if you live near McCool, anywhere in the northeastern part of Itala County, the squall line is going to be moving through your area and it, at a minimum, could produce damaging winds on the order of 60. 70 miles per hour and if a tornado is touching down those winds uh, could be even stronger than that so this has a potential for producing damage and we want you to take shelter from the storm over the next uh, several minutes until we can sound the all clear again the warning goes until about 6 15 but at its current pace i just don't think it's going to be in italic county for that long maybe for about the next 10 to 15 minutes through about the, the top of the six o'clock hour and we'll see if the national weather service wants to hold on uh, to this morning any longer let's get a closer look in uh, to where this uh, tornado is potential tornado. It's a radar indicated rotation. And there you see uh, Highway 14 right there. And some of the roads that are being affected by the storm right now, including Atala County Road 50, 53, 5205, 5202, 411, 5210, 5006, and then Berks Road as we get closer to McCool. Also, County Road 5009, and again, east of Highway 12. So that's where it is right now. Over the next couple minutes, we're talking about the next three to five minutes, that's when you're going to see the worst of the weather in eastern Italia County, south of the town of McCool. 
moving up towards Weir. I believe Weir, that's in Choctaw County. Uh, Choctaw uh, juts down just a little bit right there uh, on the northeastern side of Itala County. So Winston and Choctaw, you are in the path of the storm. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the warning. Uh, the warning only goes for Italic County, but it looks like they've already issued a severe thunderstorm warning that extends into Choctaw and um, Winston counties. And then farther to the north, well, this is not in our area, but there's another tornado warning here that picks up right around Webster County and Octavahaw County, and then it moves northeastward. And there you can see the line getting more active as we move into northeastern Mississippi. Um, Chickasaw County, that's right around Houston, uh, Calhoun City, that's Calhoun County, and then moving up towards Pontotoc and Pontotoc County. Uh, so northeastern Mississippi becoming more active uh, with this uh, line right now. In fact, that extends all the way up into uh, West Tennessee. So uh, one, two, three, four, five tornado warnings. The southernmost warning is the one in our area for eastern Italia County, south of McCool. It should be in effect for at least the next few minutes. There you clearly see where the notch is associated with the storm. That's where we have winds moving in this direction and winds moving in the opposite direction on the south side of that. So that's where your rotation is going to be, moving right up Highway 411 towards the town of McCool. Thankfully, there's nothing farther to the south in terms of rotation. We do have severe thunderstorm warnings, though, extending uh, all the way down from the metro in Scott County all the way down to the Louisiana state line. That includes Pike and Walthall counties now getting in on the act as far as severe thunderstorm warnings are concerned. This severe thunderstorm warning until 645 for, let's say, Pike and Walthall counties for Lincoln for Lawrence, for parts of Kapai and Simpson County, severe thunderstorm, but notice the tag here, a tornado possible. So there's rotation within this line. It's not strong enough to prompt a tornado warning, but if it tightens up, it could very well be um, upgraded to a tornado warning. So let's see if we can see where there might be some rotation uh, within this line, and we'll just scan the line from south to north. And to me, it looks like it's right about there. Uh, moving through the northwestern part of uh, Lawrence County, northwest of Monticello. Again, it's not tight enough to produce a tornado warning, but if it becomes more pronounced, wouldn't be surprised to see a tornado warning um, upgraded for this area. That would be northern Lawrence into the southern part of Simpson County. So we're going to be watching that closely over the next several minutes. A little bit farther up the line, we've got another severe thunderstorm warning here. This one is going to be in effect until 630, and that one does not have the tornado tag. So with this one, we're looking at the potential for uh, 60 mile per hour wind gusts. That's what makes it severe. And this entire line is moving to the east at about 40 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and check that uh, warning once again. Farther to the north, still in effect right there for eastern Italia County. We still have that notch right there. And it looks like it's moving pretty quickly to the north and to the east along Highway 411 and Highway 407 toward the McCool area. So if you're in your safe spot and you live east of Highway 12 and around McCool or south of there, just stay in your safe spot, I would say, for the next five, maybe 10 minutes at the most. And I think the storm is going to pass uh, by to the east of you. Now, for more about what's happening, I'm going to send it back over to Jacob. Hey, thanks, Ken. So again, just wanted to give you an update. We just heard from the National Weather Service that emergency managers in Leake County officially did report a tornado a couple minutes ago down near Singleton. That was what prompted this tornado warning that continues for Itala County until 615. So again, this is why we're on the air still with you uh, and as we await uh, some damage photos from across the Jackson area. So the emergency managers reported a tornado there um, near Highway 35 at Singleton. So, uh, you know, Highway 35, that runs from Carthage up to Kosciuszko. Uh, and near, nor just north of Singleton on the Italia Leak County line, there was a confirmed tornado that moved north. We saw some debris in southern Itala County, and now we're still watching the potential for some rotation. The good news is it has weakened. It would now be near McCool and Care uh, if there is still a tornado, but it looks relatively weak to me, which is good news. And debris, not seeing much there on Live MX 12 debris mode. So we're still watching that tornado warning. And again, just to show you,
you. This includes Itala County here until 615. They're still calling it an observed tornado, but I don't think it's on the ground right now. I don't see any debris with this. But again, we have several more severe thunderstorm warnings to the south. Kind of a wall of severe weather, if you will, from Forest to Raleigh to McGee to Monticello to Bogachita to Macomb to Tyler Town. So this yellow line here, that's all severe thunderstorm warnings, and those have damaging 60 to 70 mile per hour winds, along with some embedded spin ups. There's the potential for some tornadoes in, as well and these storms. So I want to start here to the south. Let's go down towards Macomb. And right now, heavy rainfall in Macomb, Pike County, lots of lightning. Wow, look at that electric storm there, especially from Magnolia up towards Summit back to Holmesville. That's moving into northern Wallfall soon. Sartonville, Tyler Town heads up. As we look at rotation here, it's broad. It's not very tight. So that's good news. We're going to hope it stays that way. Um, and we're still watching the potential for maybe a brief spin up near Fair River or Monticello or up towards Tyrus or Oma here in northern Lawrence County. We have the potential for maybe a brief spin up. The National Weather Service saying a tornado could be possible here just north of Highway 84 in Lawrence County. So we're going to watch that as well. And we continue to have a severe thunderstorm warning that can extend through Rankin, Scott, Simpson, and Smith counties. And that is moving off towards the east uh, around 60 miles per hour. So we're still tracking this storm. Um, do you want me to go now? Okay, so I think that we have some more damage reports. Uh, and Melanie, uh, you have some of that for us. Yes. We're now getting a look at some of the storm damage left behind here uh -oh. in Mississippi. Now take a look. Storms hit hard in Benton. Take a look at this. A house on Highway 16 is crushed after a tree has fallen on it. There are reports of numerous other trees down in the area as well. And here in Jackson, severe weather damage in multiple areas of downtown one of which is along Silas and Congress Street. As you can see, a tree has fallen there in the middle of the road. And take a look at this in Rankin County. You can see an actual funnel cloud forming over Trustmark Park in Pearl. Luckily, it doesn't seem to have touched down on the stadium from what we know. We are also now over 50,000 power outages in Mississippi. According to poweroutage.us, there are more than 54,000 homes without power in the state of Mississippi. And that includes about 15,000 in Hines, Madison, and Rankin counties, as well as about a third of all the homes in Yazoo County. Now let's take a live look over Vicksburg right now. This is the Mississippi River. Let's get a shot of that, the beautiful Mississippi River from our camera that is, there we go, from our camera that's at the Ameristar Casino. And look at the clouds. Look at that cloud formation. What a picture that is. All right, we're going to send it now back over to Jacob with more on what we can expect tonight. Jacob? Yeah, thanks, Melanie. So again, we're watching this line. Again, it's a solid line of severe thunderstorm warnings from Macomb to Forest up to Itala County. And I just wanted to show real quick all of the damage reports. And again, we're still getting this in. We had a funnel cloud reported in McCall Creek. Uh, we had a tornado, likely in Eagle Lake. We had severe thunderstorm damage in Bovina, a likely tornado in Youngton, Lynchburg, northern Hines County. We also had a tornado near Benton in Yazoo County. Just, I mean, a tornado up in Singleton. Of course, the most damage reports coming in from across the metro. That is a line of tornado damage from Sywell and Southwest Jackson through downtown Jackson and into Pearl, which is that funnel cloud that Melanie was just showing you there um, over the uh, the uh, Trustmark Park there in Pearl. So that's kind of where this went. And again, we're going to have more damage from across the, the state uh, again as we go through uh, our newscast here at 6. So just an update here on the tornado watch for you. Uh, we have canceled, or the National Weather Service has now canceled our western counties. So Natchez, Port Gibson, Vicksburg, Yazoo City, Belzona have been dropped from the tornado watch. The Jackson Metro still under a tornado watch down to Macomb, Brookhaven, McGee, over to Meridian, Forest, Hattiesburg, still on this tornado watch. And we're going to continue to be aware for the potential for severe weather. We still have that line of severe thunderstorm warnings across central Mississippi. So we're approaching 6 o'clock here on your Wednesday, and I'm going to send it back over to Chief Meteorologist Ken South.
All right, thank you, Jacob. You are watching 12 News at 6 p.m. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ken South, and you have been watching our continuous severe weather coverage for most of the afternoon, since about 2 o'clock this afternoon when the severe weather moved into West Mississippi. Now, here's a little bit of good news. We are still in the middle of the severe weather event. We've got some severe thunderstorm warnings and effects along this line from north to south. The latest warning goes now until 645. The main threat are going to be damaging winds at about 60 miles per hour. The good news is the last tornado warning has been allowed to expire over eastern Atala County. So for the moment, we are no longer under a tornado warning, although that could happen again. Within this line, we could see rotation and a new tornado warning may be issued. Remember, as Jacob just showed you, we've got a tornado watch in effect east uh, along and east of this line until at least 9 o'clock tonight. That's the next three hours. I think by then, this is going to be through the Pine Belt and this severe weather event will be done. But for right now, on Live IMAX 12, we're looking at not only heavy rain here in the metro, but especially to the east of us from Leak down through Scott County and moving into Smith and Simpson County along the leading edge of this line, we not only have dangerous lightning strikes and heavy rain, but what makes these storms severe right now is the potential for up to 60 mile per hour winds. Those are potentially damaging winds. Thankfully, we have not seen a lot in the way of hail uh, with these storms, so that's the only reason that this line is severe is because of the potential for damaging winds as it moves from west to east across central Mississippi and then moving into east and southeast Mississippi around the Pine Belt. So a lot has happened this afternoon and to sum up um, what has happened with the severe weather today we're going to send it over to the news desk Byron Brown and Melanie Christopher. Thank you, Ken. We are following up now on several reports of storm damage across our viewing area, and that includes parts of western Hines County into downtown Jackson and behind. At last report, Jackson State University was still looking for potential storm damage there. It looks like a tornado passed close by the main campus. Let's go right now to 12 News' Tao Ta. She will be reporting from downtown following the reports of a tornado in that area. We're going to get to her shortly with what's going on there. But heavy winds from the storms have knocked over a tree at the governor's mansion in downtown Jackson. It landed on a perimeter fence and it stretched across the street there. There are no reports of injuries, but this is what it looked like earlier this afternoon when that tree fell down. This is uh, the entrance of the governor's mansion. As you can see there uh, that the tree fell down this afternoon, uh, it hit the fence there and then fell into the street. Street. Uh, there were several workers out there cutting the tree down before the uh, storm came through downtown Jackson. You can see at that point, the Chief Meteorologist Ken South said that we were probably feeling around 40 mile an hour winds in downtown Jackson at that time when the tree fell. So, uh, but no one was injured that we were told, uh, but the tree uh, did cause some damage to uh, the governor's mansion fence and uh, there along the street, but now that they were working to remove that. Let's now go to our continue our chaos storm team coverage with 12 News is Scott Williams. She's been monitoring the storm as they cross the river into Warren County. Scotland, what are you seeing there and where are you? Yeah, Byron. So we've been in Warren County kind of all throughout the day since this line crossed the Mississippi River and moved into Mississippi. So we've been around uh, Eagle Lake area and they actually had a lot of damage. There were uh, Roofs ripped off in the middle of the roads. There were, um, you know, some tree branches and a lot of debris in the yard. I'm going to turn this camera around so you can kind of see what we're looking at here as we're driving back towards uh, the Jackson Metro. But as I continue just talking about the damage that we've seen in Warren County through today on Brunswick Drive off of Highway 465, a roof was blown off there. There were scattered debris in the trees. It was on golf carts. It was scattered across the yard. And then also we had. Um, some trees that toppled over with the strong winds and those winds were not even associated with the main line that came through so that high wind warning that we have I mean we definitely met that threshold because crews made it to the scene pretty quickly to get those cleared out but that was in Warren County on Tiffin Town Road and then back to the damage uh, Twin County Electric was on the scene just because a roof blown off was blown off a mobile home on Low Stowe Road in Warren County and again all of this is near the Eagle Lake area. So there were a lot of uh, wind damage there. Not sure if we had any reports of tornado damage, but either way, 
things happened in Warren County as that line moved through and even before it moved through. So right now I'm still trying to get this turned around. Really not seeing much as we're heading back towards the Jackson area from Warren County. Uh, just some light rain on the roadways here and but we're about to go find the damage that happened near Battlefield Park in the city of Jackson with a tornado that ripped through the city there. So um, again, live in Warren County, Scotland Williams, I'll send it back to you. All right, Scotland, thank you very much. Thousands of people lost power during the storms. Energy reports more than 4,000 outages at by 2.30 this afternoon. By 5.30, that number had jumped to more than 48,000 people.